Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. What's happening, my friend? Good What's to see happening? you. Good to Good see you, to too. See you. Good, Good to, to see you. you thriving out there in the world. Just trying to do my best. Dude, you're killing it. It's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. That comeback win was fucking fantastic. It Thanks, was, man. It was great to see. Thank you. How the fuck are you still so good? You haven't slipped at all. Uh, honestly, I think it's just the training, um, my mindset, uh, the team around me, and just honestly trying to get better every single time I step in the cage. The lighter weight classes, though, I've always felt like there's a short window of excellence. Yeah. You know, like even in boxing, it seems like it's like nine, ten years at peak form. But you defy that. You know, you really do, man. Yeah. You're still like as good as ever. It could be because I'm black. Give you my genetics. I, I have no idea. Um, I, 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 it can't just be that because there's <laughs> a lot of people that are also black that haven't been able to do that. Yeah, that's true. I think it's. I think what you're saying is it's also technique. Your technique has always been paramount. You know, it's always like the, the forefront of everything. I honestly believe it's probably just the, my upbringing in mixed martial arts, right? And e even, you know, I was talking to people the other day and I said, I started when I was 18, like in m martial arts. If if you count, some people don't count wrestling as a, uh, as a martial arts. Oh, you should. Right? I, I do. Yeah, right? I do. So, so I started in middle school. And then once I got out of high school, I didn't go to college to wrestle. I jumped right into mixed martial arts. So I think, you know, Matt, he made me do one one fight at MMA, then the next fight was uh, boxing, mixed martial arts, then kickboxing, back to MMA, shoot boxing, and then he was like, hey, you got to do this grappling tournament and you need to submit everybody. Don't come back if you don't, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> Like, you know, I'll he's a hard man. Yeah. And, you know, at the time when he was doing that, I didn't know what he was prepping me for. Right. I, I honestly didn't like I was working full time and I was still an amateur, but I would do these these things he told me to do. And then now when I get in, into my fights or when I do things, I'm able to, you know, <clears throat> go back to my beginning and be like, OK, I, I've, I faced this before and then I'm able to just keep keep getting better I my foundation is so solid that that's what's been able to keep me on top for so long well I think that really helped you in that mixed fight with Rod oh Tang. yeah because that that was a wild proposition I was like whoa yeah this is gonna be interesting and props to him for taking oh, that 100%. because he had to know after round one who's kind of fuck. I wasn't getting that ass after <laughs> round one I, well so when they offered that to me I was like I was on the couch with the wife we should explain to everybody what the okay. rules were. Yeah, so the rules were the first round. So if you guys don't know who Rod Tang is, he's one of the best, probably the best Muay Thai fighters in the world. Um, people put him at pound for pound. I he's mean, a fucking he, beast. Yeah, he just walks through these people. Like, he's a shots. beast, dude. So the first round was Muay Thai. I could not grapple. I could not, you know. <laughs> yeah, so right here when they uh, when he broke me up, I was trying to lock him up like a body lock, like a takedown. Was it a three-minute round or a five-minute round? Three-minute round, right? And so the first round was Muay Thai, and the second round was MMA. Fourth round was going to be uh, – third round was going to be Muay Thai, and the fourth round was MMA. So I knew the first round was going to be, you know, very difficult. But right there, as you see, I'm trying to hold him. I, I can't. Like, I literally – was over my hands and not trying to grab him as I would if it was MMA. Mm. Were you allowed to clinch? Because Muay Thai involves a lot of clinch work. Were you, what was the rules there? So you you are allowed to clinch, but if you watch any of the Muay Thai in one championship, they don't actually, I feel they don't give the athletes enough time to actually fight and dominate in the clinch. I feel the same way because I was watching Rod Tang's last fight. And they break just, him, they yeah, break they him they up immediately. Him and I'm like, stop. I'm like, Muay Why do you think they do that? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. They're trying to make it more, more action packed. More action packed and probably push the the um, just just the action, right? But for me, I feel like in Muay Thai, if somebody can be very dominant in the clinch, then that's that's part of the that's part of the sport, right? How dangerous did you feel him in the first round? Um, he. I think the last time I got rocked in any of my fights was probably John Dotson, and he gave me that same feeling again. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, it was fun, you know, it was fun just exchanging with them. And I think, you know, having this fight was uh, good for my career and good for my confidence. And, you know, to come off a loss against, you know, Adriano <clears throat> and then come back and fight another 
tough striker, striker mm. it was just right there. You see how I'm like this? Oh, yeah, oh. yeah, right. You can't. I can't. Like, I didn't want to. Like, right there, I would have blown through fucking mm -hmm. double leg or For I would have sure. done a knee tap. So that was the hardest thing. And then, you know, there's a point in time where, like, but you stayed competitive with him. Oh, yeah. You know, even though it, the first round was clearly the round that he wanted to turn on the gas because yeah. he's, you know, that's his world. Yeah. But, and, uh, well, the game plan was to, you know, avoid and not take damage. But I, I told I told Matt, I was like, dog, I was like, I, I didn't come over here to Singapore to get yellow card. Like, they ain't right. take, they're not taking 10% of my purse. And I said, if they tell me action and they're like, if you, I'm going to warn you, I'm going to look at you and I'm going to wink and go, it's been a good ride. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna go. <laughs> so this, when he hit me the first time, I was like, "Fuck this, we're going." I'm just gonna fight, and if I get knocked out, I get knocked out. If I don't, then hey, we got the second round. So, but you definitely tagged him a bunch. Oh you, yeah. You know, you you made it a very competitive, like right there, yeah. one two. But that motherfucker can take a shot like nobody. It's weird. Yep. He stands there and lets guys punch him in the face. Yeah. Like who the fuck does that at an elite level other than like Anderson in his prime? I think the last person I hit that hard was uh. Ali Bogatinov, like I remember I was fighting him and I remember kneeing him in the jaw and feeling his jaw shift in the fight. And I was like, I'm not going to knock you out. Like, I'm going to destroy my body before I knock you out. And I remember going home, my knees were the size of uh, grapefruits from just hitting him so much. I'm like... Well, Ali was on the sauce, too. Well, yeah, too. But yeah, that was the last time I fought somebody and I was like, holy shit, you can take a beating. Yeah. What was he? He got popped for EPO, right? It was EPO. Yep. Yeah. EPO. I remember my father-in-law, he was back there with me. I did my drug test and then I walked, walked past Ollie. He was sitting there drinking water, but I take his drug test. And my father-in-law goes, I'm telling you right now, no man could take a beating like that and be able to walk away. There's something, something that right here. Mm. And then sure enough, I'm at home playing video games. Earl Hawani was like, hey, did you hear the news? I'm like, no, you're bothering me right now. What do you want? He goes, <laughs> he popped for EPO. And I was like, and like. I don't give a shit. I'm playing games. Bye and beep. So, um, <laughs> but hey, it is. It is. It's in the past, and he was good know. though. He was good. He, he was strong. He, but it makes sense that he was on EPO because his cardio was off the charts. That's that was the biggest thing we saw in breaking him down in a fight. Is that if we put the pressure on him, eventually he's going to break like he has in his other fights. And then when he didn't, you know, we're like, huh, he's still here. You know, good yeah. thing we're prepared, but he shouldn't be here right now. Mm. But he was. Yeah. So this uh, Rod Tang fight, the, mm -hmm. one of the things that's very interesting about 1FC is how they're just really mixing everything up. Mm -hmm. They've got grappling matches, yep. you know, Mikey Musumeci's over mm -hmm. there competing, and Gary Tonin, the Rotolo brothers. It's like, it's very wild what they're doing. They're having Muay Thai matches, kickboxing matches. Mm -hmm. With that one boxing match, um, which was for a WBC title. So, really? Oh, yeah. It was, um, I believe. Boxing was, gloves? Boxing gloves. Full-blown mm -hmm. boxing. Mm -hmm. Like, it was a uh, world... A world title fight. Mm. Um, that's one of the things I love about one championship is that they're mixing it up, right? So when I got the opportunity to go over there and compete, like I knew I had the opportunity to do something fun like I did with Rod Tain, right? Now, was it difficult to make that decision to leave the UFC? Because you you were, you know, coming off of a very close, controversial mm -hmm. loss to Henry Cejudo. Mm -hmm. Very close fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was like mostly the wrestling. It was a couple of takedowns that he got. Yeah, it was a couple of takedowns, um, and I think I relied too much on the leg kicks. Like I, like in that fight, I couldn't get him down to the ground. Um, the striking seemed on the feet, like with the hands, it seemed like it was pretty even. I was, I think I outlanded him. Like when you look at the, the strike, strike, copy block strike numbers, but I felt like I relied too much on the leg kicks because I was. I was fucking tearing those legs up. Like, well, you hurt his leg real bad in that first round. Yes. He got that drop foot thing going yep, on. Yep, He had the drop thing going on, but I was like, I couldn't get there with the hands, right? I couldn't knock him with the hands, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to tear, your, I'm gonna tear your, I'm gonna tear your leg up. I kept on tearing the leg up, and when the fight ended, and I was like, ah, he probably got it. I was like, he he, he beat me, and then they read the scorecard, and I was like, huh, it is what it is. Like, what are you going to do? So, when so what I, was the decision after that? Like, what was that yeah, like? So it was frustrating. Um, but then, you know, at the time I was like, I wonder if I can do something different, right? Because I was going in the back and at the time Maki, Maki was in, uh, managing me. He still is, uh, first round managing is. And I was like, he was like, you tell me what you want to do, bro. You know, you just let me know and we'll, we'll figure it out. And I was like, I wonder if I get out of my contract. I was like, you know, try to do something different. Because at the time I looked at it this way. If I were to fight Henry Sudo again for the third time, it, it could have gone either two ways. One. I beat Henry, then I'm still stuck in the same situation I am right now when at the time they're trying to get rid of, they're in talks about getting rid of the flyweight division, right? 
Or two, if I lose to Henry, then I'm still stuck in the same position. I just lost to him again. So why not see if I can go explore other options, right? And then that's when the trade talks came about. And so the UFC just said, fine, go ahead? Well, there was more to it, right? I mean, obviously, um, you know, Chachi just you know, talked about it. It was, uh, I heard you had something to do with it as well. Like, really? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. What yeah. did I have to do with well, it? Well, um, I'll get to that point. So, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> obviously, um, you know, they wanted, Ben Askren has been wanting to fight in the UFC for a long time, right? And then, so one championship and the UFC were talking back and forth between Hunter and Matt Hume and Malky. So they're like, hey, let's do a trade, right? Like, we'll give you Ben Askren for Demetrius Johnson. Oh. And then, at one point, I heard that you know, Dana was like, nah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to make that happen, right? I don't know the full, I'm not in the room where all the puzzle pieces are being shifted. Mm-hmm. And then I was hanging out somewhere and then somebody said, you know, Joe Rogan had a piece in that. And I was like, really? He goes, yeah. And I was told that you kind of convinced him. I'm like, who gives a shit? Like, just get, get Ben Askren or something like that. So, hmm. yeah, I know, right? So. That's not really accurate. <laughs> no. I definitely was trying to get them to get Ben Askren, but I was trying to get them to get Ben Askren back when he was at Bellator, when he was in his prime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, listen, man, this guy is wrestle-fucking everybody. Yeah. I want to see if he could do that to the whole division. Like, when, when Ben was in his prime, when he did that to Koroskov, mm-hmm. when he did that to uh, Douglas Lima, yep. I was like, you got to understand how crazy this is, that this guy can do this to everybody. Yeah. And you know, people say, oh, it's boring, it's boring. Like, no, 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 it's no, fighting. no, no, no. It's fighting. Yep. This guy is... You imposing his style mm-hmm. on these murderers. Yeah, I mean Koroskov was a murderer, and Douglas Lima is a fucking savage. Yep, and he was just ragdolling these dudes and doing it in weird ways. I, I remember he he has a funky style yeah. about doing things. And I remember somebody said he was training with him, and he was able to twist and turn a certain way to where if a normal human being would do it, they would like tear their cartilage in their ribs. And he was able to do that and bring him back to where he was. And I was like, yeah, dude, that's. That's a freak right there. Well, he's always wrestled like that because he's not like a physically imposing guy. I'm sure he's very strong because mm-hmm. he's been wrestling his whole life. But yeah. his style was always like this just weird style that was very difficult for people to understand. So yeah. they would they would try to like do traditional shit with him it and just, then all of a sudden they'd be on their back. <laughs> yeah, it just didn't work. By the time we got him though, he was already fucked up. Like, yeah. He already hit, yeah. needed a hip replacement. And, and he was already retired. Yeah. Right. And so that's that's what I heard. And so when they were want to do that trade, they're like, yeah, we'll take Demetrius over Ben because Demetrius is still active and he's still, you know, yeah. still. I always look at myself as a workhorse. Right. Like I will. You're paying me to fight. I'm going to fight. Right. And so I think it was a no brainer for them. And that's that's how it happened. Well, I definitely would have kept you in the UFC. So uh, that, that's well, not. I'm sorry, sweetheart. <laughs> yes, I, wanted to say, I mean, if you look at guys like Davidson Figueredo, mm-hmm. Brandon Moreno, there's yep. some amazing fights for you. Yeah, absolutely. And the flyweight division has so, sort of risen up yep. now. There's there's a lot of like very interesting contenders now. Yeah, but I do, I don't have any say in like what what goes down. Yeah, but like, what, I'm not the guy in well, the I, negotiating I, I, room. Why am I saying you're the one that was like, we need to make this happen? Okay, when you make it happen, mm. like I just heard that you kind of had like some type of persuasion, I guess you can say, when you guys were out and about. Mm. But that's what I've been told. Like I said, I don't know the full story because I'm just an athlete. And I'm just, hey, this is what I want. Can you guys make it happen? Then I right. let, let the higher ups like Hunter, Matt Hume, Malky, they're doing all the pieces. And then, you know, shit, for all I know, that could have been a fucking rumor. Right? right, so yeah, it's definitely a rumor. Oh well, there you but, go, Lee John. It's a rumor. <laughs> Don't believe everything you hear. I, I definitely was excited to see Ben Askren come over to the UFC, but and also as a fight fan, I was excited to see you go over to one. Yeah, because the same way I was excited to see Eddie Alvarez over mm-hmm. there, and I, I think we need more events. More competition is good. One thousand. It's good for everybody. Absolutely. And. What you're seeing now with One FC is these world class fucking guys. Who's that guy that just fought John Lineker and broke his cup? Uh, Fabricio Andrade. Fucking beast, he's, man. Fucking. Beast. He's nasty. He's a nasty man. Fucking beast. <laughs> and and I'm like, look, man, these guys are out there. Oh yeah. The thing is, like, there's only so many slots in the UFC. Yep. And every now and then, a guy like Shavkat Rachmanov comes on along. You're like, where the fuck this guy come yep. from? Well, those dudes are out there in the oh, world. Oh yeah. They're, they're kickboxers. They're sambo guys. They're jujitsu guys. They're out there in the world. Yeah, I think um, for Bruce Andrade, absolutely amazing. That fight against Ooh. him and John Lineker. Bro, like, he was putting the boots to Lineker. Yeah, and he was timing that fucking that hook. Because John mm-hmm. Lineker, he throws punches straight 
hardly, but yeah. it's usually the wild winged punches, yeah. right? And with Fabrizio being so much taller than him, he's able to, you know, have good good mm -hmm. rhythm, throw that throw that lead punch. I mean, yeah. right here, he was just See, like, He boom. nailed him with that knee to the body, but then unfortunately Blast followed right up with one cup. right in the cup. <sighs> yeah, first off, why is John Lineker wearing a plastic cup? I know, like, right? Why doesn't he have like one of those diamond MMA cups? Like I have a steel cup and it still hurts. Oh, it's, you have a steel cup? Oh, hell yeah, I have a steel they cup. allow you to wear steel cups? You got cups. damn right, you got to protect these balls, baby. I, I understand. Yeah. I understand, you're yeah. a father. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, I don't need them anymore, but I just still <laughs> want to have You're done? Oh, hell yeah, I'm done. <laughs> absolutely. Um, but the steel cup is kind of fucked up. Why? Because it's metal. Because you're hitting metal. I'm a... You you're really hitting shouldn't, my, shouldn't, you're shouldn't hitting my hit it. You're hitting my balls. You definitely shouldn't hit it. Okay. But, you know, you could... <laughs> Accidentally break your foot on metal. I can accidentally break my foot on your elbow. I guess you could. Huh? Yeah, you d well, it definitely it, happens. Yep. But I feel like it should be like the diamond MMA cup, I think is the perfect balance because it's a compression cup. It's hard as fuck. You could take a solid shot. Is it hard as steel? It's definitely not. Okay, well, no. there we go. But there's there's advantages <laughs> to the diamond cup, or excuse me, to uh, the steel cup, that I feel like might be a little unfair, particularly with leverage and arm bars, mm -hmm. because it creates a fulcrum. Yep. Like, you've got a, a steel thing, yep. and you're bending the elbow over a steel thing. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, you like it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Kenny Florian told me that, too. He, he always fought with a steel cup like, on. Like, for me... I've been kicked in the balls before. Mm, you too. And yeah, and Not after fun. I think it was uh, my second E McCall. I think it was my second E McCall fight. So I, I kicked in the balls, go home, and you know you get your balls and you got your testicles. Well, t balls, testicles. But you have your wires behind it, right? Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, I'm like, holy shit! Like my balls hurt for like two weeks, three weeks. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, I'm like, something's wrong, babe. Like something is wrong. So I go to the doctor, and he's like. You know, check underneath there. He goes, "Do you got a hernia?" I was like, "You're you're fucking lying." He goes, "Yeah, you got a hernia." So I was about to get surgery to fix a hernia. Then my wife was like, "Let's get let's get a second opinion, right?" I go to another doctor and he's checking underneath there, and he goes, "Oh, dog, your wires are just your your wires are um uh, swollen. You don't have a hernia." And so I, I he was like, "You just need the proxin to get the inflammation now out of your your sac essentially." You need a what to get the inflammation? Uh, the proxin. It's the proxin. I think it's the proxin. It's a anti-inflammatory. Oh, okay. So I took some of that and that that cleared it up. But just from that kick, and I think this time I was wearing a plastic cup. He kicked mm. me there, and my shirt was one. I was like, "Yeah, never again. I'm not gonna wear a fucking plastic cup. I'm wearing a steel cup because." You kicked in the balls and needing the balls. So. It's definitely the best protection. Yeah, so I mean, that's why I wear it. You know, like mm -hmm. even now I've been grappling in the gi. Like I still wear my cup when I grapple in the gi. I I trained with this dude once who had a, a steel cup on, and mm -hmm. we were grappling, and he mounted me and put <laughs> put his steel cup in my fucking solar plexus yeah, yeah. with grapevines. Yeah, and I was Ooh. like, God damn, dude, that's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> It was so hard. It was like, it was just a metal piece just yeah. digging into your chest. Yeah. Well, and he was a little bigger than me, too, so he was yeah. like, all this weight yeah. on me. He was like, he's basically mm. dick fucking me with a metal piece. Yeah, I guess you could say that. It's rude. Now, I, I mean, I don't do that, right? I just, Thank you. Yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> and, and for me, if my opponent wants to wear a steel cup, please do. I, I, I will insist you do wear a steel cup because... You know, I can't promise that my my kicks aren't going to make it up there. I mean, right. well, I don't Shit want happens, them to. Shit happens. They happens. collide. Yeah. I, I'd rather you do everything you can to protect your balls. Yeah. You know, whether you want to wear plastic. Well, if you stuff. guys have lost balls. You know, there was a guy who was one of the Militech guys who uh, he was training and he di he didn't wear a cup for like the last round. He's like last round, just like light sparring. Nothing's going to happen. Some dude kicked him and his ball exploded. It's <laughs> happened a bunch of times. You see. See, yeah. now you're on my side. You're going to go home like, I need a, I need a steel cup. Yeah, I really ball. like the diamonds, those diamond MMA cups, because they come with compression shorts, mm -hmm. and they really cinch up tight. I have to look into it, because I, it's funny, because when I do grapple, they're like, why do you have that cup on? I was like, I was literally grappling the other night, and a guy tried to kick me over, mm -hmm. kick me straight, straight in the balls. And I was like, and it went like... Dong. And then and I was like, you see, that's why I have that on yeah. because if you would hit me there, I would I would attack them like I need 15 minutes to rest because you hit my balls. So. Right, and hopefully you didn't damage them. Yeah, hopefully it's just a bruise. Exactly. Yeah, balls are fucking <laughs> terrible design, God. <laughs>
<laughs> Why'd you put him on the I'll outside like that? I'll put two like things that? and let it hang there and don't let him get hit because it's going to hurt extremely bad. Yeah, how about some more time in the design and implementation phase of the human <laughs> being? Like, like you know, could you fucking come up He's with like, a... I got all this extra this hey, stuff. Hey, I just hey, said... Hey, hey, <laughs> hang out there. It's the case with all animals. So I was watching a lion kill a zebra the other day yeah. because I'm a mess. Yeah. And, I, and I, that's my <laughs> algorithm. And so uh, I was watching this lion kill a zebra and it was horrible because the lions had the zebra down like a couple lions and one line just goes right to the, the sack. Bo- he goes, that's my sack. That's mine. Don't and touch it. she's just pulling the nut sack off uh. of this zebra. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> what a terrible it's a, it's design. A, it's a faulty design in, in all the species, right? Yeah. All the male all species. Of them. Yeah. All the male species. Like the whole planet except for like uh, crustaceans and fish and you know, and then snakes and shit, but everybody else, nuts are on the outside. Yeah. Reptiles. Well, you know, maybe we'll evolve and uh, something will happen. Who maybe. knows? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jamie, <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> Jamie goes Joe right Rogan, <laughs> Joe Rogan, Sir Chester. Yeah. <laughs> it's so horrible, man. Look at her. She's just she's pulling on that sack. Oh, God. Bro, you can see more. Oh, uh, Jesus. You can see more ruthless shit online. I was watching online today. I saw a dude kill a dude with an axe. I was just like you on my Instagram online? feed. My Instagram feed. Oh Some dude is at a store holding onto an axe, and he's like swinging the axe. The dude is sitting there on his phone, and this guy just axes him in the middle of his forehead. Wow. Just decides to fuck it and just swings and just buries the axe in this dude's head. That's fucking horrible. You shouldn't be watching that stuff. That's bad for I you. Didn't, I couldn't help it. It was like it, it just showed up. <laughs> and I was like, is this motherfucker really going to hit him with an axe on Instagram? Like, yep. Yeah. Wow. You see so much shit. You see more mayhem, more chaos, more animals getting torn apart by lions and <laughs> the leopards and shit. It's like you see so much. Yeah. The internet is a dangerous place. I try to stay off it as much as possible. And the fact that you can see shit like that on the internet with somebody just get axed in the forehead is absolutely It's ridiculous. Crazy. The fact that it's on Instagram, I mean, I'm sure they pull it eventually. Yeah. But, but someone's got to report it. I'm sure when it's on there, someone probably took a screen capture, recorded yeah. it, to, and then it's off, you know? So and then they if, put if, it on it, Reddit, it is, and now it's on 4chan. Exactly. If it makes on the internet, it's there forever. forever. It's, it's surfing around somebody's, you yeah. know. You know, mainframe somewhere. But on the plus side, like if you're a martial artist, your access to techniques, oh, it's is off the charts. One thousand percent. Like when you started, when you were eighteen years old, mm-hmm. like uh, what year was that? I'll say two thousand six. Yeah, there wasn't <clears throat> nearly nothing. as much available. Mm-hmm. There was some. Yeah, it was definitely better than like starting in the nineties. Oh yeah, one thousand six. But what the fuck, man? There's so much information now on technique and on you could watch so many different styles, mm-hmm. so many different people competing, mm-hmm. both in Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu and wrestling and everything. Yep. Well, it's funny because uh, when I'm grappling in my gi, I'll come back, I'll see someone on Instagram. I'm like, okay, I see that. Okay, and I'll come to the gym. I'm like, ah. Huh? Success! It works, and then I'll get him in a choke, and I'm like, I'm like, I learned that on Instagram. They're like, shut the hell up! And I'm like, swear to God, just this morning. Um, but yeah, I think the internet, the internet could be a good place and could be a horrible place, right? Yeah. And I think, you know, well, that's you, humans. Well, that's true. Humans, humans are, could be good or they could be horrible. One thousand percent. The internet is just information. Yeah. So I think there's great information on the internet to get, you know, techniques to see how somebody done a certain move or yeah. how they're manipulating or shit to fix a car as well right yeah. like you know yeah. a lot of times like when I have a problem my wife's like babe I can't I can't get this to work I'm like hang up baby I'll try it I'm like well, let me go to my office real quick let me I gotta go read a book right yeah. back <clears throat> oh okay come back up like I'm a fucking genius oh you just gotta do this and this and she goes wow g- good job I was like yeah she doesn't know about the internet I mean she does keep but, her in the dark yeah, well she I just keep, keep her in the dark yeah. keep her thinking that you're a wizard <laughs> 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 but the, the so a one is also streaming, right? They yeah, stream that, on. Is it on Amazon Prime? Amazon now? Prime. That that's is great. That is amazing. That's great. Amazing. Like after the TNT deal, uh, I think we did four fights on TNT. Um, I felt like TNT was really focused on AEW, right? Like every single time you go on TNT, it was always A- AEW, AEW. Mm-hmm. Using us, I felt using us as a launcher platform to bring more fans to AEW from my perspective. But like when the deal when the deal happened with Amazon, I didn't know it did. And then you know there's talks about like, hey, we just landed a brand new U.S. broadcast deal, mm. and I was like, okay, who could it be? Is it is it you know YouTube? Who, who is it? And to see it was actually Amazon. Amazon, I was like, oh, this is a this is a fucking game changer. 
It is if Amazon gets behind it. It is. They are. Are they getting behind it in terms of like publicity and... 1,000%. Yeah, that's good. I mean... Because they have so much... It's such a weird platform because you also can buy shoes. Yep. You know, you could buy fucking jumper cables. You buy anything. You could buy anything. You buy a kidney on fucking Amazon. And, but if you have Amazon Prime, which like most people do, yep. you also have access to, to all these television shows. Music, television shows. Terminal list. Terminal list. Amazing. Yeah. Um, uh, Ring of Powers. Yeah. I mean, yep. it's... And then now we have live fights. You yeah, know, with, it's wild. Uh, white Championship. So I love it. I love that they're doing that. I just want more opportunities for fighters because I think if the sport is going to grow, I love the UFC, obviously. I'm not working anywhere else. But there's only 500 fighters in the UFC. Yeah. There's thousands and thousands of elite fighters mm -hmm. all over the world. Yep. And if they don't get a shot, guys like Adriano, mm -hmm. guys like, what's the guy's name that fought Lineker again? Uh, Fabrizio Andrade. Guys like that. Like, where's that guy coming from? You know? I mean, guys like, who's the, what's the dude that knocked out Giorgio Petrosian? Uh, Superbon. Nasty. 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 Woo! <laughs> to do that to Petrosian, mm -hmm. I mean Petrosian is like recognized as one of the very best kickboxers of all time. Yep. And for him to like right kick to the body, right kick to the head like that, holy shit, dude! Like when I tell people the the kickboxing, like yeah, look at this, these, right kick to the body, boom, boom. right kick Bop. to the body, boom. Yeah. To see Broke Petrosian go out like that is wild. Has yeah. he fought since? I don't, I don't think, think he has. has. I don't think he has. has. Yeah. That's one of those KOs. That, you know, like when Terry Adam got knocked out by Edson Barboza. Oh, yeah, with the spinning back kick. You're like, I don't know if you come back from that one. Yeah. There's sometimes when dudes get hit, it's like, it's so brutal, mm -hmm. you might never see them again. Yeah. The biggest thing that I love about one championship is like, the, everybody's like, oh, man, you know, the striking's unbelievable. But I was like, no, dude, like, you want to see some high-level fucking striking? Like, Superbon, Giorgio, my favorite person to watch that's just pure kickboxing is Hiro Akamoto. Mm. Like... I was there live when he won the the belt. I think it was um, it was in Singapore. I was sitting there watching it. and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like this man, he like his pop 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 kick, and he and he would block and then fire back immediately. And I'm mm. like, "Fucking a man!" I was like, "Absolutely amazing!" Like just. I'm blown away. Well, that's one of the also the beautiful things about what they're doing at one is that you get to see striking with no grappling. No grappling. So you get to see what the uh, most elite expression. Exactly. The purest form. Yes. The purest form of, of striking. Like these two guys, that's all we do. We don't play on the ground. We don't grapple. It's pure striking. And yeah. that's like one of the things I love to watch is like when I'm sitting there and people are like, oh man, what do you like to watch? Well, obviously I like to watch, you know, mixed martial arts. But when I get the chance to watch like high level like kickboxing, especially heavyweights who move fast. Mm. Like, I don't know the gentleman's name. There's a kickboxer in one. He's fucking massive. And he's got fucking six pack. And he's got good pecs. And he's just, he looks like a superhero. Mm -hmm. And he's like, pop, 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 high kick, uppercut, right hand. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. That's one of the things I love about with one chip chip. It's just, you get the purest of the form of But, but then the in muscles. contrast, you get There to he see, is! Yeah. That, look at him! Let me see that again. Built like a fucking superhero, pop. Look at look at that. Jesus, who is that dude? Fuck. Roman Creely Creekula? How do you say Creeklia? Creeklia? Yeah. Like God damn. Dude, like That's look, 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 look at that guy. Uh, he's like, oh, uh, Jesus Louisa. Yeah. What has just happened to him? And me? then and then look, he's come look at him. Come right back for some more, baby. <laughs> just getting right back in there. Pop, pop, pop. Just Is he Russian, that dude? I have no idea. It sounds Russian. Yeah. But whatever it is, he's from that part of the world. Like, that's the thing I love about watching one is like when he fights, I always try to watch. Because mm. he you know, he and then boom, like you're just exchanging like we were like, I hate watching I hate watching grappling. I was like, perfect, watch this and don't say anything. Shut your mouth and just enjoy this like like stand up is just I just love it. It's just that's the purest. Like MMA striking would never get there. Like, no, well, it can't. It yeah. can't. And the, the good contrast to that is your second round with Rod Tang. Yeah. Like, this is why this MMA is why. striking, because you can't open yourself up like that. No, you can't. Like, it, go to that second round. Go to the second round with Rod Tang and uh, DJ. Yeah. So this is the second round. You're like, okay, baby. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's, now, now it's time to get it back. And you can see Rod Tang. He doesn't look nearly as confident either. Well, well, my, he he kind of realizes. Look how he's on the outside now. Yeah, yeah. Different game, it's right? It's a different game. It's Fuck yes. It's look at him now. Yeah. Look at the difference. Yeah, my, look at the fucking difference. Man, what a contrast. My uh, my corner man, uh, James. James, I love the man. He, go, he goes, look at him. He's running. Look at yeah, him. He's running right now. Of course he's running. And, uh, What's wild contrast difference? 
difference between the first and the second round. Yeah. Well, like you say, you can't open yourself up. Yeah. Well, right. He, he really can't even move forward. Yeah. Look, because if he does, I'm I'm taking yeah. you down. Like there's... he's basically resigning himself to being defensive in this round. Look at how his hands are positioned. Yeah. He's looking to just push you away. Yeah. He's looking to get the fuck out of there. And for me, it was like, I just need to make, I have three minutes to work, right? And I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, I got to make sure when I get there, I have to be subtle. So these are one of the things I felt that it's helped me in my, in my evolution is becoming better. I know it's crazy to say it, being 36 years old, is just taking Ooh, my time. look at that. Duck just, under. Woo! <laughs> just taking beautiful. my time. That's a wrap, son. You ain't getting out of this. Yeah. That was the beautiful thing about watching that fight, is seeing the difference between these elite strikers when they're just allowed to strike and then seeing the difference between an elite MMA fighter and mm -hmm. how he knows he can't implement his game the same way. Yeah. I mean, that's just how it's... This is a beautiful example of why mixed martial arts is the best combat sport in the world. 1,000%. I think it's, uh, it's the best art form. Right. Obviously, you're bringing all of them together. Mm -hmm. But if you if you have someone who's a a great boxer, you know, if you're an MMA guy, you can play in that realm of boxing. You can take him to a place where he can't breathe. Or if you have a guy who's a great jujitsu guy, it's like perfect. I'm not gonna go to ground. If we do, I'm gonna punch you in the face and elbow. Like Matt Hughes, he's like everybody knows how to do armbar. Mm -hmm. So you punch him in the face, and you know everything. You know is forgotten. Yeah, you were creeping with that left arm. Yeah, here I've been focused on in the training camp. I didn't care if I got underneath your chin. I was working on my squeeze mm -hmm. and just try to squeeze the blood out of your head. And so that was amazing. And that dude fucking hung in there, man. He did. He, he did. He hung man. in there. He took it. <clears throat> he. I mean, he's getting the fuck choked out of him too. See, I think he's got a steel cup on. It's actually a Muay Thai steel cup. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So and, and he went out too. Yep. He Good did. for him. No tapping. Yep. Just tried to hang in there as long as he could. Yep. But that, that to me, is one of the more interesting things about seeing a match like that. It's like you get to see. Like, it's people that don't know. go, oh, who's going to beat that guy? Yeah. Look at his striking. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's going after Mighty Mouse, one of the greatest of all time. And mm -hmm. look, look how he's beating him <laughs> up. And then you see the second round. Like, oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, okay. that's that's what would happen. If yeah. They, but that's what would happen. That's why I love... Like I said, that's what I love about when they offered me that fight. At the beginning, they're like, "Hey, we want you to fight Rodang for the Muay Thai World Championship." I was like, "Guys, I'm very, I'm very grateful. I'm very appalled." But <laughs> they're I trying to kill you. <laughs> 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 they try to kill you. They do shit like that over there, dude. They give. I you mean, know, when um, Saryukian, when uh, Eddie Alvarez fought Saryukian, <sighs> Saryukian. That's Is the that dude who knocked him out in what chip chip? Yes. Uh, who blew his eyeball up? The the dude, the first dude he fought over there. Um, uh, Timothy Nasty Nukin. Oh yeah, I'm yeah, thinking yeah. of. Yeah, that's right. I'm yeah. thinking of a different guy. Yeah, yeah. but blew his eyeball up, right? The, uh, the names sound the same. Yeah, Timothy. Yeah. I, call, I think of Nasty Nukin. Yeah, Nasty so, Nukin. Na I call him Nasty, Mr. Nasty. But he is but nasty. Yeah. Um, yeah, but so, he's another one of those guys. Like you never heard of him. You never heard of him. But then right? you watch him fight, fight. Find that fight. We you never see him before. But you yeah. well, go go before the KO. But when you see him fight, you're like, Jesus Christ, where the fuck's this nowhere. guy been? Right, out of nowhere, yeah. and big as fuck, too. Yeah. Well, Eddie's fighting at 170 right now. Right. So it's not 155 like when he's fighting you know, in the UFC. So in one championship, there's uh, no weight cutting. You have to weigh and hydrate it, right? So that's why the guy looks massive compared to Eddie. Think about it. Eddie's been spending pretty much all his career cutting to 155. He's so a big 155. He's a huge too. 155. -er. So now that he's fighting guys at 170, the, it, the proportion, you've seen a guy at 155 his whole career, now he's at 170, it's like, oh, it, it, he's going to look different, right? Now, how how do they do the hydration thing? Because okay. that's very controversial. Yeah, okay. Because, like, didn't nine people miss weight <laughs> in the last event? <laughs> so how they do it? So when you weigh in, first you got to do your hydration. You got to do your uh your hydration test. You go in the bathroom, guy watches you pee in the cup, you bring it out, they sit up there, and they test the gravity of your urine, right? So obviously if the Ooh, urine gravity. is more... Yeah, right? Space piss. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they test our, our space piss, as you would call it, uh, and they want to see the gravity, right? So if it's more yellow, which means you're more dehydrated, um, I think it's... Uh, there's a... I think what it's called, but it's a little... Almost like a thermometer, right? It's taking it if it's like two, I think it's a 2.5. If it's 2.50, you're on the cusp, right? If it's 2.51, you're dehydrated. You fail, mm, right? Interesting. If you're overly hydrated, right? Because if you just drink a whole bunch of water, you're going to piss clear, right? Mm -hmm. 
that means you're overly hydrated. The people have failed that as well. Overly hydrated? So, How can you be overly hydrated? So Is that like because you're trying to mask the fact that you're it, dehydrated? It, it could be. Something like that. Like, I remember there was a time in the fight where Shinya Aoki, he peed and his shit was like zero, 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 one. And I'm like, dude, you're way overly hydrated. Like, come back and do it. They might have changed it, right? But this was back in, like, I think we're fighting. It was in Japan, I think in 2019. I feel like. And so you want to be in a sweet spot, right? You don't want to be too low. You want to be too high, right? So I just try to be right in the middle. So how do they make sure that that's your actual weight, though? So you, at the you end of the day, you, really. can't, you really can't. But you, what you can do is prevent r serious dehydration, like what Hamzat Chmaev does. Yes. Like that kind of 1, shit. 1,000%. Where you're right? cutting 35 pounds. Well, here's the thing. If you fight, so my natural walk around weight, like whatever I want to eat and all that stuff is like 142, right? So when I start dieting, I'll get down to 138 and working out, right? So I'm three pounds away from the the cutoff for 135. Reasonable. Reasonable. Like I don't ha like when I was making 125, I was fucking like not killing myself, but I was cutting weight. Mm -hmm. um, so when I make what would you weigh uh, the day before you began your cut? At 125, um, about 128, 127. Oh, that's not bad. So, no, 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 no. But you dehydrate I, or you dieted. No, so I would drink two gallons of water for two weeks straight. So I think a gallon of water is what eight pounds. I think it's right. Eight, eight, eight pounds. I could be wrong. Can you drink. explain how that works? Yeah. So what I did when I was cutting 125, I drink two gallons of water for two weeks straight. And what you're doing is you're water loading your body. So you're basically just pissing all day. So your body gets used to having all this extra water on you, right? And then as you're dieting, yeah, so eight pounds. See, my <clears> math <throat> is good. So it's eight pounds. So if I drink two gallons of water, I got 16 pounds of water in me that I can lose. So when I jump in the tub to cut my weight, I'm not pulling from my organs, my kidneys, and all that stuff. Oh. Um, and then you make 125, you get out, and then... You, you, I would make the weight, right? So that's what it does? It keeps it from pulling from your organs? From my scientific, I'm not a scientist, Joe, but I've never You're missed not? weight. I'm, I'm not. You didn't know that? I didn't know that. Oh, shit. Well, now you know. I'm not a scientist, <laughs> all right? And I'm not a fucking doctor as well. So people, when you hear this, don't don't say I said you can do it. But that's what I did, right? I would drink two gallons of water. Do you ever do uh, distilled water? Or nope. It, just... No. Basic water. I've Nothing. heard that's dangerous. Is yeah, that... I ha I've heard that too. I heard somebody had a seizure on that shit. Oh, Jesus. Um, so I was like, no. Nope. Because you're just robbing your body of electrolytes, I right? Mean, minerals. And, and... and you are pissing out your electrolytes and your mm. minerals too, right? Because when you drink that much water, I mean, two gallons. Like when I fought Kyojo Horiguchi, I got like, I guess you call it water poison. Because I was going from Toronto, uh, excuse me, from Seattle all the way to Toronto, right? And I'm dieting too. So... There's nothing in a plane that you can eat that's going to, you know, it's all full of sodium. I'm going to hang on to all the water, right? And obviously you cut off the sodium so your body flushes the water. But on the way to Toronto, I drank two gallons of water before boarding the plane, right? Oh, Jesus. And so the whole plane ride, I didn't eat anything, just pounding water. I get there and I'm just sick, like just as a dog. And next thing you know, Matt's like, usually when I land, I always get work. And I was like, Matt. I, I I don't feel good. Like I, I don't want to work out. And he goes, okay, all right, no worries. Just go to bed. Next day, woke up. And he goes, hey, you need to eat. And I ate. Shit, just right through me. And I just couldn't keep anything down. And the next thing you know, a couple of days, he goes, don't train, just relax. And then the UFC wanted me to do media, and he was like, nah, dog, he's not he's not feeling good. Then eventually, the third day started to feel better. And then when it came to cutting weight, I was able to make weight because I was just losing so much from you know being sick. And I remember the first time in the fight when I got taken down, I think it was the first or the second round, I was like, I don't fucking want to be here right now. Like, I am, I'm just not, I'm not here. Like, mm. I, I'm not in it. But then, you know, we rallied and- People have get... died from drinking too much water. Oh, I know, I know. Which is so crazy. Like, like fraternity hazings mm. and shit. And... Well, shit, I hear GSP does, what, a water fasting for three days? Mm. Um, I was talking to some uh, gentlemen here, and they were like, yeah, we're about to do our- our three day water fast, man. I'm super pumped. I was like, I would get a headache. Like, I, I just couldn't do it. But yeah, but he doesn't drink that much water. He just True. drinks yeah. only water. Exactly. Yeah. He's yeah. not drinking two gallons. So I misinterpreted that. He's just drinking oh. two gallons of water. Let's go, boys. And, right. But yeah. So that's what I did when I cut 20, 125. I drink two gallons of water for two weeks straight, diet down, cut out the sodium, cut out, um, then I'll cut off water the day before weigh ins and then. Sit in the tub, boil myself, and then why the why the tub and not the sauna? Um, because the sauna was not accessible, depending on where you're fighting, okay. right? Like you always got a tub wherever you're fighting, right? right so, right. 
I mean, I remember when I fought Joseph the second time, I cut like 8.2 pounds, 8.2 pounds that day to make the weight and we use a tub. So mm. it works good. Mm. So what one FC does is how many days before the fight do they test your hydration? So in, before COVID, which is this is what I really like. This is how you, you try to keep people at the same weight, right? Like how you have somebody blowing from 180 come down to 140, right? You Obviously, you can't stop it. It's going to happen, right? But you would have to weigh in two times, right? So in the past, you would fight on Saturday. So you weigh in Thursday, test hydration and weigh in. Friday, test hydration and weigh in. So if I weighed 135 on Thursday, 135 on Friday, the likely chance of me blowing up to whatever, 155 or 165, it's kind of not going to happen unless I'm right. just going to put on too much excessive weight, right? Right. And then now they weigh you after you're done fighting. So that's another thing they're starting to implement as well. So when I fought Adriano, weighed 135. After the fight, I weighed 138. And then the next day, I woke up weighing 136. So I don't blow back up you know, like these guys do when they cut all that massive weight. Mm. So that's the biggest thing is that hydration, check the weight. If you fail hydration, you're not checking your weight, right? You might be on weight. You might be 135, but you're fucking over dehydrated. They're not going to let you step on the scale. They're like, mm. nope, go get hydrated. Obviously, to get hydrated, you got to drink water. You drink water, you get heavier. You got to, so it's a fine. So what, what do they do? If you miss the weight, like when all those people missed weight, there was like nine fighters in the car that missed weight. <laughs> they have opportunity to go back and get their hydration in, in check and get their weight in check. But if you're check. missing weight, you're you're too big. Like, yeah. How are you gonna get smaller without dehydrating? You, that's the science behind it. You have to. So what I've heard people do is that they will they would uh, you know drink a lot of water, get their bladder full of hydrated water, right, and mm -hmm. then they'll go work out lose the weight and your bladder still has that hydrated water and then what they do is i'm on weight i weigh 105 135 i have this hydrated water or urine space piss in my bladder then i go out there and i pee hydrated hydrated and then i weigh in 135 so that's i've heard people do that before mm. as well so, so there's like some shenanigans there's, there's always gonna be, there's always gonna be some shenanigans right but i think the biggest thing is that weighing after the fight Right, because after you fight, you know, if I, if I fought Adrian, I went, I weighed in 135 and I come off the scale, off the cage, I'm like 162 and they weigh me, then it's like, okay, dude, like that's too big of a drastic uh, of a jump between 135 to, one, to 165. Do you think there should be more weight classes in MMA? Mm, nah. No? I think they're good. I think 135, what, 125, 135, 145, 155. I think there could be 160, but here's the thing. Go ahead. Me. Bless you, honey. Oof, thank Bless you. you. That I, was a wow. One. <laughs> I almost pulled my back out with that I, one. I was I, like, "Woo!" I, I think when you have, when you add more of these weight classes, you're gonna start seeing people try to get go like from 155 to one. It goes 160, 155 to 185, right? No, 70. 85. Oh, 170. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's fine. I, 70 I, to 85 is a big jump, though. It's only man. 15 pounds. That's a lot. That's true. That's but, a lot. Fuck, I grapple people who are way bigger. I'm not fighting them, so it's different. Right, but, but the fighting thing is the difference. Yeah. And then 85 to 205 is crazy. Yeah. I mean, it could. I mean, I don't see why not. I mean, obviously, more weight classes, more opportunities for fighters to make yeah. money. So why not? More I, champions. More, more champions. More champion versus champion matchups. Yeah. So you can, I can see. I mean, why not? I, I mean, think 10 pounds is reasonable. Every yeah. 10 is reasonable. Yeah. So 138, 145, 155, 165, 175, 185. Yes, yeah. Just do yes. that. 195, two, and then 215, and then heavyweight. Call it good. Yeah. So, I mean, let's see why not. I mean, it's not like it's going to hurt the like anybody's brand if you have more think, weight classes. I don't think it would hurt anything. But it'll get more athletes opportunity to be able to make money and make some shots and you won't have people come you know because went over in singapore and i see the guys who make 125 like jared brooks um and then uh, alex silva we're all the same height and i'm like how the fuck are you guys making 125 hydrated like i cannot do it but then when i get next to him like i'm just more girthier like i'm mm -hmm. just bigger and i'm like but i'm the same height but I, so I feel it just gives people opportunity to be at certain weight classes where if he was to fight me at 135, then he'd be like, you know, there'd be size this, uh, advantage. Yeah. Well, especially at the lower weight classes, it's a larger percentage of your yep. body weight. Yep. Like a, a 10 pound gap at heavyweight is not that big of a deal. When it's uh, at my weight, it's a huge, it's a yeah. huge deal because, it's, you know, the percentage of your body fat or body fat, but your, your weight. Another thing that I think is weird is the weight limit at heavyweight. 
Yeah, I know when they miss it, I'm like, how the fuck you missed 265? <laughs> but the fact that it exists at all. Yeah, they should just have it open weight, just like. Yeah, why do you have a 265 cutoff for the biggest fighter in the UFC? I don't know. You know? Yeah, it is what it is. Because if Francis could weigh whatever the fuck he wants, I want to see what he weighs. <laughs> I He's like 308, 298 you know, pounds. I think he would probably be like. Well, I think he'd probably the, be exactly what he is. Yeah, I think he's like the perfect specimen. Uh, for exactly. Heavyweight. I don't. I don't foresee him cutting a whole bunch of weight. Back no, and I forth. don't think he cuts any weight. But he just stays lean. Yeah, you know, which is perfect anyway. Yep, I totally agree. Yeah, but when you think about the opportunities that would be available if you had every ten pounds, I think oh. I only see positives. Yeah, one thousand percent. No negative. Only yeah. positive. Like you said, when you said it gives athletes a better opportunity to make uh, more opportunity for athletes and fighters to be able to compete. Why not? Right? Yeah. yeah, I only I only see positives. So they came to you and they asked you to fight for the World Muay Thai Championship. Oh yeah, against back, Rob back, back in that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just go on these little tangents, little yeah. journeys and That's shit. Okay, I'll bring it back. Um, so I was on the couch with the wife, and I was like, "Hey, babe." Well, they said they want you to fight him. I was like, you know, guys, I'm 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 grateful for the opportunity. But I was like, I have no interest in being a World Muay Thai fighter. Like, I I just don't. It's not on my bucket list. I don't really care. But I was like, but I will fight. And I I said, and I don't want to disrespect the other guys who been working their whole lives to capture that dream. Did you ask for MMA first? No, I didn't. I said, wow. let, me, let, me, let me finish the story, please, goddamn. Please. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Cut me off. Joe, what's wrong with you, no, man? I mean, okay. I mean one round MMA no, first. No, I'm going to get there. Okay. You're going to love it. Okay. I hope you love it. But I love it. I'm sure I love it. So I said... I said I don't I don't want to take that opportunity for somebody else who wants to be a Muay Thai world champion. I was like, I was like I'll still fight Rod Tang. We could fight do three three threes. We do it in big gloves. We can make it happen. And they're like, yeah, okay, we'll come back to you. We'll think of something. And they they called me back. And I and then I hung up the phone. I talked to my wife and she, and she goes, who was that? I was like, it was, it was one. She goes, what do they want? And I was like, they want to fight Rod Tang. She goes. Want you, want you to fight Rod Tang? I was like, yeah. And she goes, well, how do you feel about it? And I was like, well, it'll be fun. You can see what happens. I was like, remember, this is, what, this is what they pay me to do is fight. This is why I fight, to make money, right? And she goes, yeah, yeah. She goes, okay, well, you know, he's very dangerous, so we'll see what happens. Then they called me back, and I'm like, hey, how would we do a special rules fight? I was like, I'm listening. And they're like, one round Muay Thai, second round MMA, third round Muay Thai, fourth round MMA. And I was like, and what are the rounds? She's like, three-minute rounds. I was like, still same, same contract pay and all that stuff and all that. he was like yeah but like send a contract <laughs> 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 and then when when it got announced Maki's like dog man I, I can't believe you do MMA first and he was like he was like how come you argue for MMA and I was like guys I'm 35 years old I am tired of arguing and trying to get the upper hand and do all that shit and I was like if I can't make it out the first round of, of, of Muay Thai then so be it I don't care like I just don't care and that's how I left it. I didn't care about if it was first round Muay Thai or second round. I, just, I, I didn't care, right? I just truly didn't care. Well, we got to see the contrast that way. Because yeah, exactly. I think yeah. if we didn't, it would, be, it would have been over the first round. Like, yeah. I would have gone out there, pop, pop, take yeah. him down, pass yep. guard, submitted him like, okay, GG's yeah. boy. But, yeah. you know, like GG's I said, boy? good game, baby. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Like, you're doing video game talk. <laughs> I, yeah, I am. I am. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I know, like, GG boy. You're a heavy duty gamer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. But yeah, so it, it, there was no back and forth, and that's how for me that's how I wanted to be, right? I, mm. I'm at the end. I'm at the end of my career, like I know it. Like there's the end of the tunnel. I see it. I'm smiling, looking at it, and the last thing I'm gonna do is sit here, and go back and forth with the comp the company. I'm like, I really think we should do MMA first. Like I right. think I was like, you know what? Like if I get knocked out the first round. I tried. Did I, you talk to Rod Tang at all afterwards and ask yeah, him how I he trained? Him, I, I, I said, how hard did I hit you? Was it harder? Uh, he, he, go, he goes, it was okay. And I was, I was <laughs> like, hey, boys, hey, hey, we take that. We'll, we'll take that, you know? Um, but the, the beautiful thing about over there is that it's like a frat house. Like, it's like a college house. What I mean by that is, like, after that fight, you know, we're all in the back. You see Stamp. You see Adriano. You see Yuyo Wakamatsu. You see Rod Tang. We're all sitting there just talking, just chopping it up, like, you know, I remember Adriano told uh, Stan Fertesi, and Stan was like, oh, I wanted to win so bad. She fought Angela Lee that, Angela Lee that night, I believe. And she goes, I wanted to win so bad. And Adriano was like, it's okay today. It wasn't your time. You have to learn. You learn from this, right? So we're all we're all trying to make sure we all eat, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not like you're back. You see fucking Leon Edwards and uh, Jorge Matt. They're always cutting each other down. Right, mm. like that's the biggest thing that I don't like seeing. It's like you don't have to cut at somebody, cut somebody down to make yourself look better, 
right? right. Like, but that cutting down is part of the psychological warfare. Yeah, if, for a weak-minded person. Yeah, I mean, you can say all the shit you want. When that cage goes, I'm getting it. I'm, you're getting the full. You're getting the full force of me. Like, I don't give two rats ass whatever you say to me. Like, you can say whatever you want, but when that when that door closes, I'm getting your fucking ass. Like, Has I'm, anybody ever pissed you off to the point where you fought differently? Nope, nobody. Because it's wh why are you saying something to begin with? Like, like we're gonna fight. But we're right. gonna fight. Like, you can say whatever you want. Like, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna bring it. Like, right. there's there's two sides of me, right? There's me who's just chilling and happy go lucky and then there's a dark side of me where it's like we're gonna they're paying me to fight and this is what i provide my family so you can see where the fuck you want to me but when that door closes i'm gonna give you every bit of me i'm gonna i fought with a broken hand broken rib broken leg at the end of this they're gonna fix me back to 100 but i'm gonna give you 100 of me like i tell myself give yourself focus 125 percent meaty on this this task at hand so when i see people cutting each other down a psychological war and I'm like why are you talking shut mm. the fuck up and just fight like the Islam and uh, Charles Oliveira fight like them I get goosebumps seeing them stare down not talk right because right, I right. know the gravity of what they two bring what they bring to the table yeah Oliveira is so respectful so respectful and that yeah. and that makes me that turns me on even more mm -hmm. to those athletes right? right like people who talk like oh, I, I made you do this da 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 who gives a fuck like, in my opinion right people oh man it's selling tickets I don't care I, I'm watching because I, I know the gravity of your skill set that's what turns me on right so but then there's a lot of things where I try to just I try to push my weight because I go down like a, a rabbit hole where I'm like I don't need this it just it's kind of like you when you're watching people getting murdered on the internet like for me I'm like I just got to step away for a little bit and mm. push it away. Yeah. But the good thing about the shit talking is pay-per-view buys. Exactly. Like what Connor does. Yeah. 100%. I mean, that dude brings eyeballs. Yep. 100%. And, and part of it is his ability. To talk. But uh, yeah, hey, but also to fight. Hey, I'm not going to lie. Hey, when, when Betch Grihara and Ronda Rousey were about to fight, and then mm -hmm. I remember Betch uh, said something to Ronda, and Ronda was like, I'm going to beat this bitch's ass. I was like, all right, God, buy the pay per view. Fuck yeah. it. Ah, Pete, <laughs> buy it. You sold me. I, I purchased it, yeah. right? Um, and, you know, with Connor, um, I mean, he took the sport to a whole new level. Like, I'll never forget, I was playing Counter Strike. Right, and I'm sitting there playing, shooting people, and then I was like, "Y'all know who Conor McGregor is?" He goes, "Uh, yeah. Uh, what have you been living on a fucking rock?" I'm like, "This motherfucker made it to the game world. He don't even play video games. Like, good for you, Conor. Good for you." So, do those people you're playing know it's you? No. <laughs> <laughs> living under a rock. No. Bitch, I've been living in a cage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My my favorite thing is like when I'm out and about. Like, you know, I live in a, a nice nice place. You know, Washington. And people will like, someone comes to me and goes, hey, man, can I get a picture? And, you know, I'll take a picture. I'm like, sure, why not? You know, if they know who I am, I'll, I'll you know, right. take a picture, right? But then my favorite is when people are like, you know, they're all looking around. They're looking at this small 5'3 black guy in the middle of nowhere with, like, two kids. And I'm like, who the fuck is this guy? And I'm like, oh, my, oh my God, um, are, are you famous? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm famous. She goes, oh, my God, what do you do? So I like to have, I have a whole list of lies I like to do. <laughs> One of them is uh, I am a CEO of a pharmaceutical company. <laughs> and they're like, oh, what, what type of, uh, what type of you know, pharmaceuticals? I'm like, oh, male enhancement pills. You know, it's whatever you need. <laughs> Just go on these, you know, lies. And then, why you know, do you do that? Because it's fucking fun. That's why I do it. <laughs> I do it. And then my favorite one was uh, uh, we'll go to a wedding. And we're at a wedding, and some people recognize me, some people don't. And they'll be like, oh, my God, who is that? And I'm like, oh, you know, he's, he's a famous person. And they'll be like, oh, what are you doing? I'm like, work for NASA. And they're like, <laughs> <laughs> just the most outlandish shit ever. I'm like, work for NASA. And I was like, just got back from the moon. It's beautiful out there. And I was like, oh, I didn't know we went to the moon. And I was like, absolutely. It's, you know, there's a lot of shit out there. People don't, just, just go on these stories. It's my acting career. That's what I'm working on. But I just uh, do that. It's, it's fun. So, But my kids are getting older, so they're starting to cut my, they're starting to cock block me. And they're like, no, no, no. It's him. It's him. Yeah, it's Demetrius. It's him. Yeah. Oh no. And I'm like, I was like, time. You can't do that. Let me have my fun while while it lasts. So, so yeah, that's that's where I get my my that's rocks. That's your jollies. Yep. But so, well, who's the like tra trash talk to you the most before a fight? Mm, I think uh, I think the two people was probably John Dotson, the second fight, and uh, Ray Borg. Ray Borg. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I fought John Dotson, he said I was boring, X, Y, and Z. 
And so that fight, I was like, all right, I'm just going to take you to you. Like, when he kicked me in the balls, and, like, he kicked me, I was like, no, 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 no break. You don't get no fucking break at all. And he was like, oh, oh okay, whatever. Even though it hurt, but you got that steel cup on, so you, it, yeah. it takes some of that absorption. Um, but when he said to me, it was like being bored, and I was like, okay, I'm just going to push the pace. Like, I'm just going to try to drown you, right? And obviously, I want to get the finish, but wasn't able to get it. And then Ray Borg, he said, um, my wrestling wasn't good, right? And so I made it a point that I'm going to out-scramble you in that fight. Like, every single scramble, I made sure I won that scramble because he said, I can out-scramble you. Bro, that finish was one of the wildest <laughs> submissions I've ever seen. <laughs> Suplex to armbar in the air. Yeah. In the air you caught it. And then when you told me that you practiced that yep. and that you hit that in practice, I mean, that yep. is wild. That's one of the wildest finishes I've ever seen. Thanks, man. It was yeah. beautiful. Yeah, when... Uh, it got dead to me first. Um, Matt, he did it to me, and he caught me, and I was like, "What the? I was like, what the fuck was that?" He goes, "Well, you're getting so good now. I can't just do a basic armbar. Like I have to, I have to um, experiment essentially." And so when he did it, when he did it to me, I was like, "Okay, you have to teach it to me." So I would do it, and I do it, and he says, "You know what your biggest weakness is, Deej?" I'm like, "What?" He goes, "You think? Stop thinking and just do." And then when I was in the fight, That's some Bruce Lee shit, right there. Yeah, man, it is right. <laughs> Here it is. Let's take a look at it. Boom! The way you hit that was <laughs> that was so wild, man. That yeah. was so wild. Yeah, uh, it, it's funny because he said, um, "Stop, stop thinking. Just do. Just let your body do what it, it knows what to do." And we just learned how to. Um, Matt was teaching. Matt teaches in concept, which I love, and he said that. If somebody's holding on to weight, right? If if somebody's trying to be extremely heavy, you can't. It's going to be a lot harder to move somebody, right? But if you can get them to move their weight or shift their weight a certain way, then they're lighter. I was like, that's what he was teaching mm -hmm. at that time. So in that fight, I had Ray Borg's back, and he's being heavy. He's trying to like he knows I'm going to try to get a takedown. He's trying to be heavy. So I said, okay, he's in my mind. I was like, okay, he's heavy right now. I was like, okay. I have to make him shift his weight. I don't want to shift his weight. He needs to shift the weight. So I kept kneeing him and kneeing him and kneeing him. And then once he went like, bop, I was like, perfect. You just shifted your weight. Go back, Jamie. If you get to, yeah, no, that's sex stuff. <laughs> um, okay. At the, at the beginning, he he kind of elbows me in the back of the face. And once he elbowed me, he he basically gave me his weight. And once mm -hmm. he did that, I was like, perfect. Thank you. And it just threw him up and got him. So, um yeah, but that finish and my last Adriano finish was probably like, like if I can have it on my not on my wall, but like if someone was like, "Hey, what are your best finish finishes?" I'll say those two because I think that's the pinnacle of technique coming in real time. Well, the Adriano too. One of the beautiful things was you got him with the exact same thing he got you with. Yes, but they left but in me a different way. A different way, yeah. one thousand um, percent. And I think the distance control following him and then knowing the cage is coming and then just giving yeah. everything I had into it was probably like that's like doesn't get any better than that that's like picture perfect if you look at the slow-mo you see I'm in southpaw position I'm on the outside lead leg landing up my left knee in milliseconds like you're playing with windows of opportunity that are open and closing like that those why and then the the Ray Borg one it's like I'm throwing him up and then I have to make sure when he loses his balance I have to catch it and land and throw like I like working with like mil like the windows are opportunity. So those mm. are, those those two are like why are they my favorite? Because it's like when you break down the the, the technique of it, it's like Wah. find the Adriano one because the, the the Adriano finish in the last one was so beautiful. What you're saying, like we you're like uh, not not not, not, not uh, bam, and then bam. right there. Yeah, yeah that's it. And it's funny people are like man, where'd you learn? And I was like uh, Matt. He's done it to me my whole career. Uh, not blasting me in the face, but understanding like lighting up your knee here comes the cage or here comes the ring and then throwing and he's done it to me i've seen him doing it to rich i've seen him doing this uh jens pulver uh uh spencer fisher i seen him do it to all those guys so being able to do it in real time at a world championship level it was like perfect yeah it was the timing of it was fantastic yeah the, the fact that matt has like Matt has been your coach and that you you're one of the greatest of all time. It's kind of amazing that there's not more guys from him that are on that level. It takes a special, I think, bond. I think it takes a special uh, athlete. Um, you know, obviously injuries play a factor in that. 
um, winning, competing, because you can teach you can teach somebody all that stuff, but to be able to do it in, under the lights at the right time to make yeah. the right and it's it's not all the stuff that goes on in the gym. It's all the stuff that goes on at home as well, right? Like, gotta live a, a healthy lifestyle. Gotta have a, you know. At home, life's got to be amazing too. All that stuff comes in. Yeah, otherwise it fucks with your head, right? It, it does, right? It, it. I truly believe it does. I think so, so too. So it's, it's yes, it's you know, some of the some of the stuff you do it in the gym, but it's also a lot of stuff you do at the house. And this is wow. when, yeah, look at this timing, wow. bang! Oh my god, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's, and the the walk off. Yeah, Olivia Cost says, "I'm so glad that the fight ended there because I didn't want to have to pull you back to go fight more." And I was like, "If you did, I would have came back." And I would have finished it. I would have. I would have came back. Like, all right, let's let's keep going. Like this. Stage- How did you know that he was a, a completely done when you walked off? I mean, it's it's such a it's a perfect knee, but like watching this lands, we got a stall on the internet here. Yeah, it's fine. So it, boom, it goes down, and you just knew. You didn't I, even follow up. I threw everything I had in that knee. Like I threw everything I had in it, and I knew that it was, it was. If, and, if, if, and if it wasn't, if he got back up, he got up. He goes. Like even that fight, like there's part where I shot and then he he defends a takedown because he's so fucking long, and he starts kneeing me in the head, right? And I'm like, oh sh-, like oh shit, oh shit in my mind. And then when he's switching over for the Darius, I said, I'm not fucking done yet. And I I got up and then I started I kept on fighting. So if he was to say the same thing, got up and goes, I'm not done yet. I'm like perfect. I still got more energy to give you. So that right hand was so perfect too. The timing uh-huh. of that, yeah. and that knee on the fucking cheekbone. Yeah. It was a good fight. It was a beautiful fight. Yeah. And how satisfying was that for you to come back from the first fight that you guys had? It was good. Um, it was good, but <laughs> that guy's face on the right. <laughs> I think it's the matchmaker Rick. He's hilarious. Um, for me, after the after the first fight I had with him, I went through, like, I think 2019, I think it was 2019, 2020 was a huge, like, shift in my life, you know, that affected me differently and my mindset. And so when I lost that first fight to him, I was so, wasn't mad about losing. I was mad about, I put so much pressure on myself about being perfect. And it just drove me insane. Like everything I want to do is perfect. I still had that in me, but. In what way? What do you mean? So I don't know. Like I felt like, I remember being in the hotel room and I re- we watched the fight and then I felt like it was just after COVID. So my, my sister passed during, uh, I was getting ready for a fight, right? This is where it kind of stemmed from. So I was getting ready for a fight. My sister, she she died. And then seeing her pass and then seeing basically the end game of life, right? Mm-hmm. Like being there and seeing her just like, she's there. And then seeing her go through the trauma and then her being gone and then seeing the traumatic, how it affected my mom. And after, you know, I remember when everything happened, I was in the hospital and I was like, you guys need help clean up all this blood? Because I can, I can, I can help. And she goes, honey, that's okay. Just, just go home. I was like, all right, mom, I love you. Let me know if you need me. I'll go home, start a balling. My wife's there. I mean, that was a huge uh, movement in my life where I was like, that's fucking end game. Like, doesn't matter what you've done before. That's, you got to go peaceful. You go, you know, traumatic, right? So that happened. And I was, and then. It was pointing me. I was like, "Damn!" Like I called Matt. I was like, "Hey, I'm not gonna be in. Tra-. I was like, "Hey, I'm not gonna be in training today. I gotta go bury my sister, right?" And I took a step back and I was like, "Fuck, man! I'm always training for a fight. Always training for a fight." And my sister just died, and I'm I can't go train because I gotta go bury her. But there was like weird shit to my mind. I was like, "I'm always getting ready for a fight. Always getting ready for a fight." And then I went and fought, won the World Grand Prix. Fast forward, getting ready to fight Adriano. We go through COVID nineteen, right? All the gyms are shut down. Our gym kind of like. We got uh, relocated, so there's only three of us training, and then I fight Adriano, and I was the game plan was there, but I just felt like I wasn't. Matt even said he, after I came back from the knockout, he was like, you know, when you left, I wasn't comfortable where you were at. Like when you left, I was like, you're just gonna have to fight through this. You're gonna have to just to get through it. And then sitting in the hotel room, and I was like, why am I? Why am I putting this stress on myself? Why? For what? And then that was like kind of like a snapping period. Then when I fought Rod Tang, I was like, everybody's so worried about winning and losing. Why? Why? Because you're going to die someday. You're going to die someday. Right. So why the fuck do you worry about winning and losing? Are you having fun? 
yeah, okay, perfect. Who cares if you want to lose? So I went there and fought him. I was like, all right. You know, I said, I told Matt, I was like, I'm not going to fucking run. Like, I'm going to exchange. Like, I don't care if he has a hard chance. I'm going to go out there and give him my best. And then there's a ASAP Rocky said, when has it ever been cool to knock somebody down? It's never been uh, cool. Whoever made it cool to de- belittle somebody or whatever is not cool, right? So that's always in the back of my head. So when I fought Rotting, and then I, I felt that success, not success, but I felt like I won the fight and it was like, oh, dude, you did a good job. I was like, thanks, man. Appreciate it. You know, go back home, take care of the wife and kids. And then when I fought Adrian on the second time, I was like, we do the training camp. It was probably the toughest training camp, but I started doing things different, right? Like before I'm like, I gotta be perfect. I can't, I can't have any beer. I can't go watch a concert. I gotta be strict. And I was like, I think the last sparring session after the Adrian fight, I was like, went to a concert, had two beers, had a fucking chicken sandwich. And I'm like, I need to enjoy my life because mm. eventually I'm going to die, right? And I don't wanna be in my deathbed. I was like, man, I was so strict and all that stuff. Like, I wanna enjoy my life. And so that right there, from that traumatic thing in my life, it's just shifted my my whole perspective. Like, on my birthday, August 13th, I was, my wife was like, oh, we didn't get you any alcohol. We just got, you know, all water. And I was like, no, give me a fucking glass of champagne. Like, I'm 30, I'm 36 years old. Like, I, I've been doing this for fucking, if I, if I train eight weeks and I can have one fucking beer and it's going to change my outcome of winning this fight, then I don't deserve to win the fight, I guess. So, it is what it is. So, I feel like that, that whole mindset is just made me a better a better athlete better fighter because it's released some pressure from you P- pressure of being perfect mm. right and that's how it is like i remember one day i was like i just grappled that new wave right and i was grappling a kid who was 18 years old and he was fucking working me and someone who has an ego we'd be like oh, i'm the best fighter in the world like that should never happen for me i'm like dude you're fucking good good job i'm so excited to see i'm so excited to see what you've been able to achieve and in nine years, you've been grappling under John Dunnerhan. Like, mm. I'm so happy for you. I'm so proud of you. I want to follow you. I want to follow your career, right? Like, just my whole mindset has just shifted. And, yeah, I, I don't know what it is. I mean, I know what it is. It's that. But for me, that's how I like to look at my fights now. And, yeah, it's been making me. Randy Couture better. said that once to me. Yeah. He was talking about uh, fighting and winning. He's like, so many people put so much pressure on winning. He's yeah. like. He goes, you do your best. Yeah. He goes, you're trying to win. Yeah. And if you lose, the same people who love you, they're still going to love you. You're still going to have your friends. Yep. It's, it's, you're going to be okay. Yeah. And that's 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 like taking my game to a whole other level. Like, I truly believe that. Like, but I believe that. Believe that. Like, just that mindset of just like, I don't give a fuck what happens. Like, mm. like they're like, who, who, who are you going to fight? Yeah. So I'm like, I don't care. Doesn't change. Doesn't change. My pay doesn't change my outlook on life. Doesn't doesn't change me from my end game, which is financial freedom, right? So doesn't care. I don't care who it is, you know, when it is. I just want to make sure that I never lose focus of my end game. And yeah, that's helped me a lot. So when you went over to One FC, like, how do they pay over there? They pay good. Is it comparable to the it, UFC? It, is it better? Everybody's contract is different. Mm-hmm. Everybody's contract is different. I'm happy. I'm very happy where I, I'm getting, but everybody's totally different. Do you um feel- I don't like I don't like arguing, right? I don't right. like like I remember when I fought um what was it? Like I remember when I fought Chris Carriasso, I made ah, fuck, I don't know. I made let's say I made hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? And then I'll fight the next challenger, uh Kyojo Horiguchi, I would make less money. Right now, I'm like, how the fuck is this? This this because you always get your your show and your win. Excuse me, your show and win, right? Right. Your show might be 150k, and your wins fifty thousand dollar bonus. Typically, it goes up by escalator of three thousand, ten thousand, fifteen thousand. It all depends, right? But then when I fought Chris Carriasso, I made you know let's say 150 thousand, and then when I fought Kyojo Gucci, I made less. Even though the pay it went up, I still made less money. Why? Right. I don't know why. Right. Because I didn't get pay per view points at the time. Right, and so I was like, I remember telling Sean, I was like, "Hey, Sean, can I just fight that guy again? Because I made more money fighting Chris Carriasso than if I fought Kyojo Horiguchi." And he goes, "No, no, you can't do that." Da 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 da. But did he say? Well, I don't understand why you're making less when you're winning. I don't winning. know. I don't know. It was. I think it was probably because pay per view points, bonus. I have no idea. Right. It just. But I didn't get pay per view points, mm-hmm. so that's the biggest thing. And then I remember when it came time for me to renegotiate my contract when I was after I beat Henry Silva the first time. Like, I argued, and I, not argued, but I fought for pay-per-view points, right? Because that's where you start making that that next wealth, 
right? right? Like, shit, John Jones has a fight, what, two, three years? Right. And he's made all that money in pay-per-view points, so he has that opportunity to take two to three years off, right? So for me, I fought and fought and fought, and I was like, I want pay-per-view points. Like, even though I don't draw, right? I mean, hopefully one day I am a draw, but if I land on a Connor fight or I've always, if I land on a Connor fight or a John Jones fight or whatever, that's going to bring 875,000 pay per view buys. If you make 350K and then you, the pay per view structure is zero to 200, zero dollars, two to four, a dollar, uh, four to six, you know, dollar fifty, then six to eight, you know, two dollars. You add all that up, you're walking out with a $2 million paycheck, right? So you do that, if I were to have, you know, pay per view points on 11 consecutive title defense. You do the fucking math. That would yeah. be way well off. So, um, yeah. So Did you get it? No. No. No, I got it on one fight, and it's when I fought Henry Cerrito the second time. But I felt like they gave that to me after I fought uh, Ray Borg. I was about to fight Ray Borg. We're in, Tor- I was in Montreal. We're in Canada. I was cutting weight. They called and say, hey, stop cutting weight. He's not going to make it. I'm like, the fuck, man? We're going to push the fight back to oh, two, three weeks later. Fought in Vegas, and after I beat him in Vegas, so like, hey, we're gonna give you um, pay-per-view points on this on your 11th on on this one against Henry Cerrito, and that was it. So I was always at a, at a ceiling, but I don't like that back and forth. I don't like the tension. I don't like the tension. I don't like the negotiation. It's like, hey, this is what I want. This is what I think I'm worth. How can we get here, right? It would just if there was never any transparency. Just chill and talk in a, a non-hostile environment. That and, makes sense. And how is the difference between the way they treat you? At one FC, it's great. We talk. We like for us to have that conversation about the Rotting fight is how it should be. It should be like a marriage, right? It should be like, hey, this is we want you to fight Rotting for the world title. And I'm like, you know what? I appreciate that, but I I think that's deserved for somebody else who he's worked his whole life to get that opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, what did you have in mind? I was like, well, I would love to fight him. You know, let's do Muay Thai. I feel like that dialect should be going, but. Obviously, we never got to that point when I was in, you know, the UFC. So, but is there like a more hostile uh, relationship with the UFC no. when you were there versus oh one thousand percent? Oh, one thousand percent. Because remember, at the time, it's did you see that um, uh, the man who tried to race the UFC, the man who tried to race the UFC, the UFC tried to race me. It's um, they tried uh, to race you. Uh, Patrick Gavey did it. Uh, it's on. Um, YouTube. He he did a, a huge piece on it, and at the time when I was going through my my title reign, it, like they were talking about getting rid of the division, right? So there's always tension because they're trying to get rid of the division. You know what I mean? Yeah. So when so imagine that, you're you're killing it, you're fucking just destroying everybody in the division, and next thing you know the CEO or the boss who goes, I'm gonna get rid of that fucking division because it's not bringing any money. How do you think that's gonna make you feel? Not good. Exactly. So yeah. that's where the tension starts to, to to battle. So how are you going to have a relationship with somebody who wants to get rid of your division when you're going out there trying to put on an exciting fight, right? So that's where the tension, there, that's where the tension started from. Was this, uh, I'm trying to remember, was this before I've, WME bought the UFC? Yes. Yes. Okay. This is, I totally forgot about all this until this guy did it. And I sat there and watched it. I'm like, holy shit, I forgot about that. Like, I forgot about all the things that it was... That, up one thing that does really bother me is that they don't address you. Like when you know you, you talk about the elites of the elites and the, the, some of the greatest ever, and you know show highlight reels. It's like how the fuck do you leave <laughs> out Mighty Mouse? Because like for years I was saying you're the best ever. For years mm-hmm. I was like the expression of technique. If you just look at what he's able to do in there, who the fuck is better? Yeah, you know there's. I know that the talent at 125, at least at the time that you were running shit, yep. was not the same as the, as the talent at 205 or oh, 85 yeah. or yeah. 70. There, there was just the the talent was better because there's more people that size. Yeah, absolutely. But the expression of technique, like if that's what we're really concentrating on, is excellence. Yeah, which is what I think we really should be thinking about. Mm-hmm. And like, how the fuck do you ignore that? I think it's because I'm still active. Right, because they're like, so what? It I doesn't know. hurt anybody. Man. I That's, know, I know. I'm it not doesn't. a businessman, clearly. Yeah, I'm not but, either. But <laughs> well, I, don't... I am a little bit. But yeah, I I totally agree with you. I think it's because I'm still active, right? I mean, so what? If if they're like, man, we're if they're like, oh, you know, one of the greatest ever, Demetri Johnson, you know, did all this stuff, and they're like, damn, what happened to Demetri Johnson? Google Demetri, what Demetri Johnson? What he's doing? Oh, he's fighting one championship. Oh, what's one championship? Oh, what? Oh, oh, yeah, kickboxing, Muay Thai, submission. Oh, 
I'm gonna start watching this. Financially, that, though, One FC supposedly is struggling. They're was, doing fine. There was something recently they lost a hundred million dollars. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm not a financial guru. Uh, I think you're not. Wait, you're not a scientist or a financial guru. <laughs> no, no w- when it comes to that, I think Chatri hit on it when he was on uh, his last interview on Aaron Hawani. He's like, when you're trying to expand, right? Like it's going to cost capital, and you got to raise revenue. Mm-hmm. So when he when he explained it that way, it makes total sense, right? I think right. Amazon, like for the longest time, they didn't make any revenue. They just put all the money they made back in it and just put it back into the company to expand more and more and more, right? Did you get to meet Jeff Bezos? No, he's not the CEO anymore. He's he stepped down. Still, don't you want to meet him? Uh, yeah, I want to go. I want to go to his Blue Origin, go into space. Uh, I'm, uh, well, I, I always tell myself like with Elon Musk when he's trying. <laughs> 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 I just think like Elon Musk when he's talking about like colonizing Mars, and I think like if I didn't have any kids and fuck that, and I wasn't married, and I'm like 62 and I'm like fucking shredded, and I'm like. I'll go to I'll, I'll go to Mars, Elon. Just bro, that's six months in a spaceship. You being a hyper? Oh, oh, six months. You being a what? A hyper what? What are you saying? You ever seen aliens too? That shit ain't real. <laughs> yeah, not when you have when you have Elon Musk building shit. I'm you, sure you it think you're gonna real. go into like suspended animation for six months? <laughs> no. Come on, man, hyper, that's a science fiction hi, hi, movie. Hyper sleep, hyper sleep. Fuck you know? out of here. That ain't real. <laughs> You just you'll die, <laughs> six months of your life of not existing. I'm sure I can make it happen. You you give me you give me internet. I mean he's got Starlink up there. You give me internet. I don't think you get Starlink when you're halfway to Mars. I think it cuts out. I think it's like when you're in a plane <laughs> over the ocean and the Wi-Fi goes out. <laughs> you said I, th- I think it cuts out when you're halfway to Mars. Yeah, so I don't know. you're like shit. I can't even check my Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I'm like oh damn it. Well, you know what. I like to live in my fantasy land, so I think it would be cool just to, you know, see what happens if, if we do colonize Mars and get up there. I think it would be dope, so. Well, it'd definitely be dope once it's already done and settled. You just don't want to be an early adopter. Yeah, yeah. At least I don't. I mean, I know a lot of people do. Yeah. There's a lot of people that are dying to go out there. Yeah. But I've, I feel like those people are crazy. <laughs> you know? Hey, you gotta be pioneer. Sometimes you get. I guess I don't know. I just think like Jeff Bezos. Like that's how you're supposed to live when you're a billionaire. Yeah, you're supposed to get jacked. Yeah, I remember you're get ta- a bombshell girlfriend. Uh, see the that, baller yacht. See that's that's what I'm talking about. You're 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 spreading positivity, right? Like yeah. here's a man. He's worked his whole life, and now he's able to you know yeah. enjoy the fruits of his labor. They never. You, Somebody was talking about like, talking shit about him being all jacked. I'm like, who cares if he's jacked? Like, what do you want him to do? Be fat like Bill Gates? Exactly. I want him to be jacked. Yeah, you want to see it happen. It's like that's yes. the, the thing about balling out of control. Balling out of control. Like, hey, you want that? Hey, she won't get one. And why how many not? people get to have a hundred million bucks or a hundred billion? That very few. Yep. I feel like when you got that, you're supposed to ball. You're supposed to. Yeah. You have an obligation. <laughs> <It's> like- <laughs> <laughs> to all of us watching, you should be out there balling. To ball out. When he got that hot girlfriend, I'm like, fuck yeah, yeah. Jeff Bezos. Yeah. When he's on the yacht with his shirt yep, off, yep. looking like or a fucking sh- MMA fighter, mm-hmm. I'm like, fuck yeah, Jeff Bezos. Yeah, I love Get it. Get some. Yeah, I remember you said that, and I was like, look at Joe, spreading that positive. I, I love listen, that. I'm I love all it. about people excelling. Mm-hmm. I love watching people excel. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I don't like people falling down. I mean, I like when douchebags get their comeuppance, but I yeah. really wish they would just learn and get better. That's what ultimately yes. I want. Yes. I don't like when people fall apart. Yeah. Like when people say, man, that guy sucks. I'm like, I don't think that's the correct word uh, to yeah. use that he sucks. I think his skills are not there yet. He can, right. he can, he can learn. Right. More, right. right. So, of course. Because with my kids, they just started training in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And when they go out there, I see them get destroyed. And I'm like, and they get they get upset. I'm like, dude, it's okay. It's part like, of the it's, thing. It's part of the thing. And I said, you can always get better. You don't suck. You're just not knowledgeable yet in the sport or, or, or in, in the game. The right? beautiful thing is you have all this room for growth. Exactly. And then when you do get better, man. Yep. I remember when I first started submitting people when I was a blue belt. It was mm-hmm. like the most magical feeling in the world. I was like, oh, my God. I'm, yeah. Now I'm winning exchanges. Yep. Whereas before, I was getting my ass handed to yep. me every day. Like, finally, I'm getting taps. It was so exciting. And you get to see, like, oh, my God, I'm getting prog. All that drilling is paying off. Now I can hit those moves. Yep. Now I see it. Yep. It's That's one of the greatest things about being a new person at something. Yep. And not having any skill is that you have so much room for growth. You can get better. Yeah, I think seeing my children do Because for who I am and what I've done in mixed martial arts and athletics... Like, I've never wanted to push my kids into doing any type of martial arts at all. Like, I told my wife, like, I don't want them to do it, right? But Tyron came home talking shit. 
Ah! Right? <laughs> 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 he did right he did so he came home and i was like we, me and my wife we have a strict bedtime it's like hey seven o'clock you're upstairs brushing your teeth Seven thirty, you're reading your book and then eight o'clock it's, it's lights out no if ands or buts that's that's what it is right so we're, we're going on that 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 schedule tyron he's on the top bunk he goes yeah Y'all, y'all expect me to go to bed at this fucking time. Da, 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 da. <laughs> and I'm like, how I'm old like, is he? he? Well, at the time, he's eight. Eight oh, years old, my right? Oh, God. Eight year old eight years old. Shit. And, he, and he's, he, he's up to my chest, right? And <laughs> I've never laid a hand on my kids, right? Me being raised, I, I've been whipped or whatever, like we all have in, in 80s and 90s, right? But for me, I, I have never laid a finger on my kids, right? So for me. You can't. Well, I know I can't. But you really can't. I really can't, right? Yeah. So I've never spanked, not even spanking, no spanking. It's like, Good for you. We, we try to, me and my wife want to break the cycle of like, talk. Yeah, Teach communicate. Me to, communicate, yeah. communicate. Why are you upset? Tell me right, why you're upset. Right. So how can we can figure this out, right? Right. So he's up there and he's just go, going hopped on the fucking dance fit. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, let me get this straight. So. You can't go to bed at eight o'clock, and the reason why he goes, I got all this fucking energy. That's that's why you expect me to just go to bed. And I was like, you have all this energy to burn. He goes, yeah. And I was like, okay, okay. Next day, it's like, guess what, guys? Signed you up for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He goes, what is this? I'm like, oh, it's it's grappling. And then we found an amazing place by by the house. Well, I I train there, right? Like, typically I'm always training AMC, right? Because Matt's there. But then that's an hour, hour and 15 minutes from the house. So it's very hard to make that drive all the time, especially with the kids in school. I want to be part of their lives and cook them breakfast. When they come from school, I want to be there. So the longest time what I would do between my training camps, I would not train at all. Like I'll just lift weights and stay fresh. But then I saw a note to myself back in 2011 of me, writing, a diary of me writing down my weight cuts. And I was like, I weigh 142 pounds. And it's 10 years later, I still weigh 142 pounds. So all that weight lifting between there, I didn't gain any weight. So I was like, huh, I need to find something else to do besides lift weights. Like, How can I better myself in my crap? So then my old coach, uh, friend Steve Skids, who was like, hey, you should come grapple. Grapple at this place. I was like, ah, I don't, don't want to grapple. There's nobody better than, you know, ain't nobody better than, you know, Matt out there, right? So I went and I grappled. His, his name is uh, Professor Jan. <clears throat> I grappled him. It was a fucking murder. He just destroyed me. I, I, I said, what? Pure jujitsu, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, what just happened? And I was like, okay. That was, that was in no gi. I was like, okay, I'm put my gi on. See, see what you got there. It was even worse. It was, it was bad. So his gym is right down the street from my house. So I was like, okay, perfect. I train with him. I trust him. I trust his curriculum. I trust his, how he teaches. Through Tyron and Maverick in there. And so now, to get back to the full context of this, of this rant, is that to see my kids in that light flash in their head about doing technique, drilling, being accountable, showing up on time, doing all that stuff, get, them getting their first stripe, their second stripe, their third stripe. They're about to compete on Sunday for their first ever jiu-jitsu tournament. Like, that, it's, it's amazing to see. Mm. It, it, it makes me excited for the end of my career, mm. right? Because I look forward to being with my children and helping them guide them through life where it's like, you know, everybody's like, man, what are you gonna do when you retire? I was like, what are the, uh, hopefully whatever the fuck I want. Like, if I wanna wake up and make my kids breakfast and send them off to school, go to the gym, lift some weights, come home, pick them up, like, hey, yo, what y'all wanna do, right? And I think that's because me growing up, I didn't have a father figure, right? I had multiple, but I didn't have somebody who was there all the time, you mm -hmm. know? So. Um, yeah, I agree. When you're something, when you're new at something, and to see improvement is amazing. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. It's good for everybody. And I think that's one of the things that fucks people up in life is that they continue to do the same thing. They don't do any new things, and you don't you don't develop new pathways of thinking. Yep. And the the beginner's mindset, which is, it's a very important mindset, and also the mindset of not having any ego and always being willing to learn. And that's right. what that's what I think made me even what's been making me better because when I started, I would never train outside of AMC, never, right? Eventually AMC and uh, Charles Combat Club, we came together and our, our team, so let me get back to full spectrum. So all my title defenses, UFC, you know, all my fights in one championship, you know, I'm about to fight 
you know, Ali Bagatino, Samba World Champion, blah 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 blah. We need to bring we need to bring in five Samba World Champions. We need to do X, Y, and Z. You see those guys all oh, we we're fighting, you know, I think John Jones, when he's fighting Alex Gust- uh, Gustafsson, he brought in a boxing guy, right? Just to give him that boxing. I've never done that in my whole entire career. Never. Never believed in it. Still don't believe in it, right? So what we did now is that we brought in, uh, not brought in, we merged together with Charlie's Combat Club and AMC. So now we have a bigger team. And then I started training just pure jiu-jitsu, right? Now I'm spending probably two to three days in a gi by an hour and a half, two hours in the morning before my next training, uh, my next training session at night. So that's one of the things I've done, and that's been able to make me better because it makes me think, right? Like somebody says, why are you in a gi? You don't fight in a gi. And I was like, I know, but... I want to understand this game and if I can understand what's holding me from passing his guard. Like, I'll be past, I'll be trying to pass on his guard. And I was like, why the fuck am I past your guard yet? Like, this is absolutely insane. I should be past your guard. And I'm like, you're holding me. Why are you holding me? How are you holding me? It starts to get my, it starts to stimulate my brain. And so when I get in my gi and I take my gi off, whew, I'm cutting through guard like butter, baby. It's, mm. it's just different. Like, my, yeah. and so when I fight Adriano, when I was on my back, I was like, I'm here all fucking day. Like, I'm not gonna get tired. I'm not able to, like, do. I felt like in that fight, I dealt most of my damage from my back, from spending so much more time in my gi grappling. If that makes sense. It does in a way. And it certainly makes you more defensively responsible. Yes. Defensively responsible. But now, as I, as I sit back and watch that fight, the last fight with him, now I'm like, okay, so he was able to do this, X, Y, and Z. So I told myself, I was like, I bet you I could probably submit it off my back. Well, I'm going to try. So I've been working more in my gi off my back just to get better. Because I feel like, you know, a lot of people lose fights when they're on their back. But mm-hmm. how can I be offensive off my back? So, I mean, to have the mindset to be able to be willing to change and do things different. And, I mean, what, I'm 16, um, eight, yeah, 18 years in my career and starting to do something totally different is, is kind of contributing to me getting better and having no ego. Staying fresh. Staying fresh. Yeah. Yep. One thousand percent. That beginner's mindset. Yep. Absolutely. And and always improving, even though you're you know an elite fighter for a long period of time. Yep. That's probably why you're still at the top of your game. Yeah. But I can't. I, I can't. I can't fight forever. So I gotta you know figure things out. How many out. more years do you think you have? You said you're thirty six now. Thirty six. So, so I I get myself. I told myself four more fights. Four more fights. Four more fights, which will be two years, two two fights a year, right? But then as I get older, I find things pulling pulling myself, pulling me away from that, right? Like my children, my businesses, um, my wife, want to travel with her. You know, there's so many things I want to do. Um, so I, I, I get myself four more fights. Sometimes I even look at it and I'm like, shit, it might be two just because my body, like it doesn't heal as fast. It, it just doesn't. You know, and so we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I'm just trying to stay focused, do different things. You know, I always tell people, like, it's important to focus on what makes you most of your money, but you have to branch off to do different things, right? Yeah. Like, I just started investing in tech. I invested in um, my quantum Indy square bars. Those is, are good. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad you do. And yeah. Do, well, tell people what it is again, because you talk, you talk like you yeah, fight. Yeah. You talk a million <laughs> miles an hour. And some I know of those you're, words you're sitting here, it's like, blah, blah, they blah, flow blah, into blah, each blah, other. Blah, no, blah, no, no, I'm paying no. attention, yeah, but yeah. I don't know what the fuck you said your, the name of your bars are. Yeah. Neither does anybody quantum else. Quantum energy list. squares. Quantum energy squares. Yes, yes. We just launched in uh, HEB, which is a big thing here in Austin. That's one of the things I'm doing here as well. It's the first to market caffeinated bars, and it's, Basically, whole foods mixed with caffeine, and it gives you that long-lasting energy. So typically in the morning, when people have their coffee or however you get your energy consumption, where it's caffeine, well, mostly caffeine. There it is. Oh, right there, there it is right there. I, I ate one before this podcast. Yeah. They're very delicious. Well, I sent it. I gave some to my father-in-law when he goes hunting over in Idaho and Utah, and he'll eat them, and it gives him you know, good energy. Because you hunt. You know how fucking long you're out there for. Yeah. You're out there for it's a, a lot very, of very long time. You're burning too. Right? And sometimes, like when I, I had one the other day in the morning because Tanith, I call her Miss Heard because she's it's my four year old daughter. She, her sleep patterns are so horrible that it's not even funny. I'm like, I, I don't understand what's going on. So I would sleep, 
I would put her to bed at 8. She wakes up at midnight, then put her back to bed. She wakes up at 3 a.m., and then I got to go train. I was like, I need I need something to give me a pick-me-up. I hate coffee because it I feel like it dehydrates me. And so I'll take one of these bad boys, chop it up, put it in my oatmeal, throw some uh, chocolate milk in there as well. Mix that bad boy up. Eat that. Go to the gym. Feel great, man. So, and so what is in it? It's, you said it has so, 100 milligrams of caffeine. 100 mil, so it's a, the caffeine is equivalent to one cup of coffee, right? So it has the whole foods in it. It has pumpkin seeds, MCT oil, chia seeds. Um, we have multiple flavors, coconut uh, coconut flakes. My favorite flavor is a dark chocolate pink Himalayan salt. It's my, Ooh. Yes, sir. Is you, that a mix of those? This, or is, is, a, it, this is a variety pack. So. so is the pink Himalayan salt one in there? Yeah, I think you already ate that one already. Is that what I ate? That, was, that shit was good. Uh, there's one more. Yeah, so this one right here. Um, but just... Just this side of, of of life, starting starting businesses and aligning myself with businesses, like mm-hmm. the very first packaging we had on this was, it was great, right? But then to see when we changed the packaging, to see the difference of the sales, it was like night and day. Just the way it looks? Just the way it looks. Just the way it looks. It let people know it's more of a lifestyle, right? You don't have to eat this if you're a professional athlete or whatnot, right? Just, mm-hmm. just those things, you know. Another business you know, I do is... Uh, Zekin, which is you probably know some stuff about this. When you stream, not stream, but when you're on YouTube, mm-hmm. right, and you have your ads coming through, you don't get to dictate what ad comes on or whatnot, right? Right. You don't get to do that. But with Zekin, we want to give the power back to the creator, right? So a lot of stuff that's been going on with Twitch, YouTube. Um, you have Mixer. Jamie can talk about this a little more because he's in this room with me. You have Facebook as well. A lot of the content creators, when they make their content, they're only getting a certain amount of revenue split, whether it's 50 50, 70 30. It's very unheard of. You get 80 20, right? So with Zekin, we're trying to give the power back to the creator where Joe gets to choose what ads he wants to be ran on his content, right? Because if you go on, you know, you go on Twitch, it might be fucking Domino's Pizza right. and you have no say so what's on there, right? So with Zekin, we're trying to give that back to. Um, the content creator. So that's another thing that so we're working on. What is it? Is a platform? So, so it's it's a it's a live it's a live broadcasting studio, right? So that's like it's it's basis right now, right? And what basis? We, well, it's pretty what it is right now. Okay. Right. And so how I use it or how it's being used is you go on a live stream. I live stream. I send you the link, right? And when I send you the link, I'm doing a, a seminar on there, right? And let's say you want to be able to ask me a question. You raise your hand. We're trying to fix this. My, my job is to break this and make it more polished, right? Okay. So you raise your hand. You raise your hand. I bring you into the actual live stream itself. So there are a couple things out there that are kind of like that, like StreamYard or whatever it may be, but that's taking a screen capture of of your uh, camera to where I'm actually bringing to the live feed. But is this a separate platform this or a, are you th- using this like on Twitch? Or? No, this is a separate platform. So it's a new platform. It's a new platform. New platform, right? So it, a new streaming platform where new you stream control platform. the ads. Where you, that's what we're getting to. That's what you're trying to get. That's what you're trying to get to. But the way I like to use it, when I got brought on, is I was sitting in the, the, the office in Seattle. It's a startup company. I'm sitting there and he's showing me all the stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I know what this is. He goes, you do? And I was like, yeah, this is like OBS, XSplit. And he goes, what do you mean? And I was like, well, you have your your canvas and you put overlays over it and then you stream it out to your your customer. And then with, and he goes, oh, you, you want to be part of the company? I, I would love to have your insight. And I was like, absolutely. Because it's something I do all the time when I'm streaming on Twitch, right? But if I was to give you OBS, you know, you, you'd be like, what the hell am I doing with this, DJ? And I'm like, well, build something. With this, we're trying to make it friendly, uh, friendly user to where if you give it to somebody, they're able to like, hey, I'm dragging this here, this here. And you'll be surprised how people are like, this is too sophisticated. I'm like, it's pretty easy. So it is right here. Drop in the product and it gives you all the, the information selling. But the- oh, so like when someone is on the stream, like if you're wearing a shirt on the stream, someone could click on your shirt. Yep. And sell the shirt. Yeah. And the biggest thing is like when I used it, I used it for my podcast when we were doing it. And like I said, my job is to break it. <laughs> so I had like eight, I think seven people all in once just chatting, right? Seeing mm-hmm. if the, see if the audio is good. No, no drops. If it's all, if it's all uh, 
just going good. Nobody's dropping, no friends are dropping. And there was a gentleman who was, I sent him the link and he was like, we're all chatting. He goes, hey, I have a question. It's like, what's up? And he goes, I'm having a hard time boxing. Like with my one-two combination, I'm like, okay, go on, I'm listening. And he started breaking down and he goes, I feel like when I throw my one-two, I'm overextending. And I said, okay, well, let's pull up a video. So I'm able to pull up a video and we're all, eight of us are allowed to watch it together and I could break it down live with him. And I'm like, okay, so you see how this gentleman's going one, two, and he's not really overcommitting with the, the two. He's just going pop, 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 pop. And he goes, oh, yeah, I see that. I'm able to break that down in live time with that gentleman. So that's uh, one of the cool things about the program as well. So it's interactive. It's very interactive. interactive. Very interactive. So Is that scalable? Like if you, what, you got a thousand people in a room with you? Well, I mean, we fucking try, but we're, it's, like I said, we're trying to work to that point, mm-hmm. right? So right now... We're slowly getting uh, getting more things. We have a new update coming out in November um, where you can actually start having certain scenes and size certain things down. So I'm just trying to stimulate my brain out of mixed martial arts, mm. right? Because I can't fight forever, right. right? So right now I fight in August. So from August till maybe first quarter of 2023, I need to fill my time up with stuff besides my wife and the children. Right. And this is the stuff like- To try to create businesses. Try to create businesses, right? Right. I mean, because you realize that this is the home stretch. This is the home stretch. I know it is. Like, I'm not, I'm not afraid of it. I'm, not, I'm smiling at it because at some point you have to stop. You have to. Like, I feel like you just have to as an mm. athlete. Because if my body recovered like it was when I was 26, then yeah, I can see myself going for another 10 to 15 years. But shit, my shin still hurts from kicking- Adrian in August, and I was Does it grapp- really? well. I was grappling uh, uh, yesterday, and somebody was on my shin. I was like, "Fuck, that still hurts." I'm like, "Why is that still hurting?" Like, I got X-rays. I got um, uh, what's it called? Um, MRI. Uh, not MRI. Ultrasound. Ultrasound. Because when I fought Henry, I got a blood clot in my right leg, and I didn't know why. Well, I know why, but I was like, "My right leg hurts. Why does it still hurt?" Excuse me. Next thing you know, I try CBD oil, rub it on there. Still hurting. Waking up in sweats. Go to the doctor. I actually talked to the, um, what's her name? Uh, Heather, who is, um, she's the UFC's, um, she does all the re- uh, therapy, uh, physical therapist. And she goes, I think you might have a blood clot. And I was like, okay. I go to the doctor and I was like, hey, dude, I need uh, I need an ultrasound on my right leg. He goes, why? He was like, I think I got a blood clot. He goes, look at you. You're a fucking specimen. Get out of here. I'm like, Okay, whatever. I left. Then yeah, I that's ca- a ridiculous thing for a doctor to say. I know that. That's what he said, though. <laughs> um, then I called him back and I was like, "Hey, dude, like, I'm still in pain. Give me the ultrasound. I'll pay. For, I'll give you cash. Like, just give me the ultrasound." Did the ultrasound? I left. He called me back ASAP. He goes, "Dude, you need to get in here right now." I was like, "What's up?" He goes, "That is the biggest blood clot I've ever seen. Get in here now." And then I was on. Um, what was the um, medication I was on? Z- Z- Zerato. I was on Zerato for three months straight. And he goes, do not get cut. Do not get any internal bleeding because I cannot reverse this. Um, my oh, dad, Jesus my Christ. father-in-law, he's on Coumadin, I believe it is, which that one's reversible because he has a, um, a, a heart defect where it, his blood needs to be thin. So um, so the blood clot was from an impact? It's from me just kicking the shit out of him in that fight. Mm. Over and over and over and over. And he goes, he, he said it was from the trauma. And I was like, really? Then one doctor says, oh, it's because you're dehydrated. And I'm like, okay. Mm. So every single time after my fights, like when I have my shins be bruised for that long, for two to three weeks, I'm like, I'm going to get an ultrasound. He goes, doesn't hurt to get it just because you're susceptible to them because you've had them before in the past. So, but yeah. My was shin- that the only time you'd ever have a blood clot was yeah, from that? From that, yeah. It was the only time. And it's just from the trauma. Just from the kicking, trauma of kicking. But, shin to shin. Yep. But imagine that, like, you have that, and it's like, I can't do this forever. Right, right. Right? And so right. that's why I have to think outside the box. Like, what, I, what do you do for recovery? Are you doing ice baths, sauna? Are you doing... So when I was fighting Rod Tank, I was doing um, ice baths. I was doing that. And then um, I will do the hot tub. But then it got super cold in my fucking... Uh, Ice bath froze, so I couldn't use it anymore because we live in Washington, so it just gets below uh, 40 degrees. So it's just a brick of ice. So now, honestly, the only thing I do for recovery is just chill, hang out with the wife. So it became a solid piece of ice? One big solid ice, like an ice skating rink. 
But you need to get one that doesn't get that cold. I know, I know, I know. I'm working on it. So, what, what, what kind of an ice bath was it? <laughs> it was a trowel. It was a, a horse trowel. Oh, so it was just like some just, primitive thing. Just that, primitive. Like, yeah. Okay. Like just fill it up with fill it up with water. Water and, and then climb in there. Climb in there. It got to like uh, I think the lowest we got it was like 47 degrees. But that shouldn't freeze. No, that's what how lowest we got it. But that was at a certain point in time in the winter time. Then it got lower. The, the temperatures dropped even more. Like this is. Probably the most like barbaric thing, not barbaric, but it's like I put water in it and we get freezing temperatures in so Washington. So it just stays State. cold. So it stays cold. So it actually got a big solid block of ice. You're an elite professional athlete. You need to get yourself a real I know, cold plunge. I know, I know. I'm sure I, someone will send you one. I just bought a, a sauna from Costco though, so we're, we're gonna oh, there build you my go. home. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I'm making the right steps, right, right, you know, right steps to get there. So. Um, but have you put that together yet? Not yet. No, 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 no. Sawn is huge. Yeah, I just saw yours, and that's we got the uh, not ice barrel, but um, the the barrel, barrel sauna. The yeah, barrel we have sauna. a Salouse. It's a Salouse sauna. I love it, man. The mm. one that we have here at the studio, best sauna I've ever had. It's amazing. Mm. It's perfect size. It, the I noticed a difference when I was in an ice bath because not ice bath, but the the ice plunge because when I was sparring, the Muay Thai sparring was like Matt was on me like white on rice, like in my face. Flowing like it's and this is why my mindset had to change because when you're getting ready to do a Muay Thai fight with Brian Tang, the amount of kicking I was doing and the amount of injuries I had, like I remember I pulled my grain, my, my grain, my groin, and then I was kicking. I remember I kicked, I kicked James and I jumped off him and I pl- planted and I I started stumbling. And Matt goes, whoa, 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 what the fuck is that? And I was like, uh, my foot. And he goes, what's wrong? And I was like, I can't walk. <laughs> Well, I couldn't walk. I, I can't. I can't plant to throw. He goes, "What happened?" I was like, "Well, I'm fucking kicking all day and k- kicking elbows, kicking knees. So, what do you want me to do? Stop?" And he was like, "No, we got to rest. We got to find other ways to train around that." But all the sparring I would do. So my my routine would be Monday. Monday would be pads conditioning. Tuesday would be sparring, hard sparring at night, and then Wednesday would be hard grappling, and then Wednesday night would be off. So after the hard Wednesday Wednesday grappling. Come home, jump in the cold plunge. Felt so I'll do ten minutes in the cold plunge. Ten, ten minutes, really? Oh, dude! Wow, dude! I've done forty-seven minutes in. What? Yeah, I forty-seven it. minutes. Oh, excuse me, that's forty-seven. Forty-seven degrees. Oh, that's that's the lowest okay. I've got. So I've done in forty-seven degrees. I've done ten minutes. Okay. Ten minutes in there. Ten minutes in a hot tub. Ten minutes in there, and I, I love it. Like mm. it's I notice a huge difference. So. Me and the wife are trying to get the sauna set up first. Then we'll look for the next step for to keep. You know, I saw GSP he has the ice barrel, and I know ice barrel doesn't offer the um, the temperature, but I saw his had a temperature where he can uh, regulate the temperature. What's mm. it? and his? So I, I don't ha- know about that one. What does he have? It was Go on his Instagram. GSP's like Instagram. He, he, I saw, and I was like, he got a f- his. I wonder if his is. Uh, does he, it has some sort of a cooling element he, in it? He, yes, he wasn't advertising it. It was like something like I'm going through, and I, I you know I follow him, and I saw, mm-hmm. it and I was like, what's that thing right here? And I. I think I screenshot it and I was like, what is that? And I tried to zoom in on it, but I didn't know what it was. And I went to the website and I was like, I don't see that. But so we're trying to find a solution for the cold plunge. Like what's going to be the easiest non-maintenance thing that I can use in order to have that cold go back and forth. Well, you have a good social media platform. I'm sure someone will want to give you one after listening to this. Maybe. We'll see. No, nope. here it is. Not so, that one. Uh, so that's him pouring ice in there. Yeah, not that one. It's, that's, it's a different one. He actually had it on... It Just was, go to his actual Instagram and yeah. see. Like, he was talking. He goes, you guys, if you want to, I think it was like challenges or whatever. Then I think it was like his morning routine. And he it was just him jumping in real quick. And like on the very far right. <laughs> That's not GSP. <laughs> 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 that poor girl probably gets like attacked constantly. Uh, that's awesome. Like, who are you? She's like, only got 630. There it is, George St. Pierre. Uh, so I'll scroll down a little bit. Right. Uh, I think it's that one right there. Right there. It's, uh, the middle one. Yep. You see that thing in the bottom to the bo- Seems bottom like here, right? the same one. Oh, oh okay. So. Yeah. Look at right there. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, You ain't fooling nobody. Interesting. See that right there. I saw that and I was like, they don't offer that on the website, but what is that? Huh. Because that looks very. I'll go to the website and see what I can find. It says big project in the work. So maybe it's that. Maybe it's that. You got yeah. me. You got me, GSP. You, yeah. you got it. So I'm just trying to look at the most very convenient way to do it. Like the sauna, my buddy has one. He says, dude, all I have to do is stay in it twice a year, and that's it. Set it and leave it. That's how. Uh, the sauna, you mean? The, the sauna that he has. So I was yeah. like, uh, and he's had it for a year, and I'm like, perfect. Yeah. I'll, I'll buy it. It's well, we've easy. had this sauna for 
a long time, and I've got one at home, the same company. So what's your what's your maintenance? Sauna, nothing, zero. That's what Turned I want. Turned it on. But I know with, with the hot tub I had, it was like you had to check the chemicals, you got yeah. to check all that stuff. And I'm like, hot tub's not as good. The reason why hot tub's not as good is because it can't get as hot because you'll cook. But I mean, you just can to cook in, in dry air exactly. in the sauna, you can get really hot, and that's when your body produces the heat shock proteins. But, but with uh, the maintenance of the sauna, not worry about how hot it gets, just the it's maintenance. Easy. Of, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't break. No, seriously, the hot tub. The, oh. the maintenance of a hot tub of checking right. the water. That's different. It needs more it's pH like a level. Pool. Exactly. Yeah. Where it's like I don't have the time. It's I, not as good for you either. It's yeah. just it it doesn't I mean the hot tub's great for you, don't yes. get me wrong, but you don't get the same reaction that you get from a, a sauna. A sauna is yes. the way to go. Yes. That motherfucker gets hot. <laughs> so we're we're doing a sauna, but like with the cold plunge, right? Like I looked at the um the cold plunge that um so the iceberg, we looked at that. It's easy to drain. Flip the mm -hmm. knob, it comes out, fill it up, yeah. put your ice in it. It's good, right? Then we looked at the ice, the ice bath. Uh, it's like the ice plunge. You sit in it, but you have a filter. You got to have this and yeah. that. And I'm like, that's too much maintenance for me. Like I don't. Yeah, have but they don't. They don't require that much maintenance. It's it's not that big a deal. I've only had one issue with either one of them. I have at home. I have a Morosco, mm -hmm. Morosco cold plunge, which is amazing. And yep. then here we have a Blue Cube, which is also amazing. And there's no maintenance. This we've had one problem with this one where there's something wrong with the the motor, but they came and fixed it really not, quickly. Not problems, just maintenance. No maintenance is nothing. Oh, okay. Well, it's nothing. I, I'm a lazy person. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you. You're I not lazy. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> you, you clearly don't know any really I'm a, lazy I, person. I know, right? I'm all, I'm all sure. I like to introduce you to some of my friends. <laughs> some real lazy people. I just don't. You'll feel real good about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I just, when it's, when I just want easy maintenance where it's yes. like, I just, if I forget to do something for two months, I don't want to come back to see fucking all this allergy no, no, growing. No, 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 right? no, no. So, I, I don't fuck with mine. Yeah. I mean, I maintain mine at home. Yeah. It's easy. Well, you're you're also a very, you know, you're a very busy person. You're very, you know, yeah, you know. I stay on top of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you stay on top of shit. I don't. Yeah. But it's not that hard to do, man. I, yeah. I'm climbing that motherfucker every day. Yeah. It's, it's no no maintenance. Yeah. I just, there's a little thing that I have to clean every now and then that's a filter. Yeah. It takes me a minute. See, that's not bad. I pop it off. Yep. I, I hose it off yep. with, a, with a, a, a garden hose. Uh -huh. And then I put it back in there and then I climb in. Oh, there's okay. There's ice floating in it. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can solve that problem when time counts. My wife's like, let's get the, let's get the sauna going because yeah. she'll use that. She uses. She loves mm -hmm. Asana. The two of them together is the m most amazing combination. Oh yeah, and after after I'm done competing full time, you know, with, with the businesses are going, I'll still see see them go. Um, I I still want to. I'm still going to try to compete in something, right? And you think you'll do grappling competition? It'll be grappling. It was yeah. going to be motocross, right? I was, oh my god! <laughs> I know. Don't die! I know. Come on, man. Well, so my son he loves motocross, like my mm. oldest, right? And he, I bought him a bike. And next thing you know, I'm like, man, this looks like a lot of fun. I want to try it, right? So I bought myself a bike. And I had like, you know, a uh, 150, 150cc uh, uh, Honda. And I'm sitting and everyone's like, you know, it's a little kid bike. And I was like, I'm built like a little kid. I'm 100, <laughs> I'm 140, uh, 42 pounds, 5'3". Uh, your son's bigger than me and he's fucking 12, okay? So I'm, I'm in the kid category. But then he was like, no, dude, like you need like a legit 250FC. And I'm like, okay, fine. So I got a 250 Husqvarna and I'm fucking... You know, going off, going off jumps, not very fast. Well, I'm going fast, but I'm not going off like you know, whipping. And we went to uh, <clears throat> what's it called, uh, Disneyland. I see all these people in wheelchairs. I'm like, Ooh. yeah, I need to stop riding dirt bikes. I think I'm gonna give it up. But motocross was gonna be my thing. It was gonna feel fuel my desire to compete. But then after I found jujitsu, like in the place I train at now, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna try to compete in um, IBJJF. Like I, I told him, I asked one, I was like, hey guys, can I, can I compete at IBJJF this year? They're like, no, like, no, you yeah, can't. Yeah, what did you tear your ACL? That's what he said. Or, yeah. I, and now I was like, and they're like. Is IBJJF, do they do heel hooks and knee reaps and stuff like that? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But it, it would have been in the gi and I'm only a brown belt. And my, everybody was like, you're going to get destroyed. I was like, I don't care. At least I tried and see what yeah. it's like, you know? But Yeah, you will for a little. Yeah, and then yeah. you'll become elite at that. I hope. 100%. I hope. That, you're a fucking champion, bro. <laughs> you got a champion's mind. You're not going to suck. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, so far it's been going good. I mean, the, 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 the place I train at, the vibe is good. The professor's energy is amazing. So Beautiful. it's, it's. That's everything. Yeah. 
It's totally everything. He's so fortunate to have a good place. You know, we're very fortunate here uh, in Austin because we have uh, uh, Tenth Planet is mm. right down the street. Oh, there's, there's a little bit from here, and then John Donher, very close. And I mean, there's a fucking uh, Shanji Hibero's here. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a Gracie Baja. There's like so many gyms here. It's Damn. amazing. It's, Damn. A, it's an incredible place. I got to train with John. I took one of his classes and. He's a goddamn wizard. I was, I was, in, I was impressed. I, I was, was, you know, I'm, I'm healing. I got an MCL tear that um, I'm healing, mm-hmm. and uh, I was uh, here yesterday with uh, Maynard from Tool, mm-hmm. and Maynard was uh, had John Donaher on the mats coaching him. Mm. It was incredible. Yeah, like watching John going over details. I was like, God damn. I, I like his energy. How it's just like, good job, Demetrius. Oh, He's amazing. Good job, Juan. Good job, Gordon. And it's just that chill, consistent, you know, just. Relax vibes. He's so obsessed with people getting better. Mm-hmm. I mean, that is all the guy does. You talk to Gordon about it. That yeah. is all the guy does. Mm. He trains people all day long, and then he watches tape. Wow. That's all the guy does. No. The guy has zero life. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't even have fucking furniture in his apartment. I, I, I heard about that. It's crazy. I, was like, I was like, you guys are fucking lying, right? He goes, no, 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 no. He has no furniture. I think somebody forced him to buy furniture oh, and a TV. I've never seen him out of a rash guard. Yeah. When you hey, go to dinner with him, he you wears never, a rash You guard. never know. He, he He's like, you never know. Shit might pop off right here, and no, I'm ready to he go. He just doesn't feel the need to wear anything else. <laughs> like, it's acceptable clothing. He gives zero fucks about what he looks like. Yeah. He gives zero fucks. He wears a fanny pack everywhere. Hey, good for he's, him. He doesn't give a fuck. He's living his best life, baby. He's a best master. Life. He is so unusual. Like, to try to find another one of those. Yeah. You could find someone who's faking it. Yeah. But they'll have ego. They'll have this. They'll have yeah. problems. Like. Yeah. He's, he is such a treasure. It takes it takes a special person to yeah. give give dedicate your life to teaching people. Have you ever right? listened to him talk? Like on uh, John Donaher was on uh, Lex Friedman's podcast. I, I've heard him on here. I'm on yeah. his podcast for. Um, I met him in Japan when he was getting to uh, help Gary Tonin fight. Mm-hmm. Um, but same consistent vibe. Where it's yes. like, you know, I, I like it because. He's so knowledgeable, and he's just like, and taking his class, it's very fast paced. He's like, okay, guys, what do I do? Come right here. You're gonna flip him up like this, get mm-hmm. him down like that. Boom. Okay, once again, do it again. Oh, okay, all right, guys, go. And then you just like, all right, let's try, it, guys. One, two, three. There's like a, you know, like a rhythm. At, at the beginning, I was like, and everyone's like, like no rhythm whatsoever. I'm like, fuck it, nobody's nobody's on the vibe. I'm just gonna just do my own thing and and, and do the class. But absolutely amazing. No, he's he's a, a genuinely unusual human being, and it's like the, you you hear about people like that in movies. Yeah, you know, the, the, that are like so singularly focused and dedicated. But it's rare to actually come across one in mm-hmm. real life, mm-hmm. and it translates to his athletes. Like Gordon trains seven days a week. I heard so 365 days a year. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you, Christmas. <laughs> fuck yeah. you, New Year's. <laughs> fuck your birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Are you training? When I asked him, and I said. You know, because one of the coaches at uh, Grapple Club asked me, he goes, hey, can you pick their brain on, like, what, like, their their training regimen is? I was like, sure. And I asked him, he says, they train, there's no days off. They train three times a day, two-hour sessions, one, and the second, the third session is intensity. So he's like, I believe in volume, right? A lot of volume and then a little bit uh, intensity. For pure grappling, not mixed martial arts. He right. goes, mixed martial arts, you would just, it's not feasible. You can't even do that. Right. right? So I can kind of understand how they just grapple seven days a week, no no off days, intensity. And I was like, okay, what about days off? And he goes, no days off. And he goes, if if an athlete decides that he needs a day off, then I think that person is more mature. He should be mature enough to understand that he needs to take a day off. I will never fight an athlete if they need a day off. And I think that's very important as a, as a coach and athlete. Uh, understanding or mm-hmm. bond that a hey, coach. I need time off. No, you don't. Get your ass back on that mat. Da, 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 da. Right. But I'm sure if, if like Gary's like, hey, dude, I need I need time off. I need to take two days off, three days off. I'm sure, you know, John's like, you go ahead, do your thing, man. Of course, if you're dedicated enough that he understands who you are mm-hmm. and that you're all in. Yep. And you're saying, hey, man, something's up. Like mm-hmm. my body's falling apart here. I yep. just I need a little bit of a break. Yep. Like he knows you're not fucking off. You he actually exactly. do need a break. But exactly. that's the difference, which is. You have to like, but he has zero patience for lazy people. <laughs> which is like, there's there's certain people that just like they're you know guys like that. They're yeah, just, they you know. I he, mean, how many talented people have you met that could have been great, but they lack the discipline? I've never met anybody who lacked the discipline. I I met people who've lacked the. What's the one I'm looking for? 
injury prone. Consistency. Oh, injury no, prone. injury yeah. prone. Right. Yeah. Like I have never, out of all the people I've ever trained with, I've never met somebody who's been lazy. Like really, I've never have. But there are people. Like BJ oh, Penn, oh. who's like super fucking talented, but it was hard yeah. for him to get training. But then when he started training with Marv Marinovich, yep. and they put him through those intensive strength and conditioning sessions. He's like, fuck this. But, but also, that was when he was at the very best. Like yep. the Sean Shirk fight, yep. the Diego Sanchez fight. Like that was prime BJ. BJ Penn, yep. Where he was just a fucking unstoppable force. Yeah, I just, I've never come, come across that. It's usually injury prone. Like, mm. I, I mean, some of the things that I've seen, my buddy, um, the guy I fought in Muay Thai as an amateur, he broke my rib. Um, Scott, he was a fucking nasty, nasty um, athlete. Just, we would sprint together. He's right he's right next to me or ahead of me. We'd grapple. He's hanging with me grappling. And we were amateur. We weren't professional yet. Um, but he would always just injure himself. And I remember forget, you know, we would train in the morning and we would train at night. I'm next door playing video games, and he's next door, I call him gangster rounds. He's just going through everybody, just grappling, grappling. Next thing you know, somebody comes next door and goes, DJ, you, you, you need to come next door. I'm like, what's up? He goes, it's, it's Scott. I come next door, and I'm like, Scott, what's up? He goes, he goes, pull, pull this shirt down, fucking AC joint was like, bop, out, oh, out. Man. hanging out. And he was going to fight, and I'm like, dude, you have to chill. Like, you will break your body. Like, you're not lazy, but that's the biggest thing. As an athlete, we always worry that we're not going to be ready. We're going to yeah. We want to make sure we're, we're we're ready for the ac- not activity, but the the competition. So we overtrain. He was one of those guys that he would have been very very special in mixed martial or whatever he did in athletics, but he was very injury prone. How many more injuries did he have besides that? Oh, dude, um, he's broke his hand. Um, he injured his, <laughs> he got cauliflower ear, and I made fun of him. He got cauliflower ear, and then he ended up getting surgery to fix his cauliflower ear. Oh, he, boy. He came, back, <laughs> he came back in the gym, bop, bop, bloop, blew back up, and he, he was like, I got fucking surgery, and it blew back up. I was like, I told you it's going to blow back up. Like, Well, you can't, you, you're not supposed to train for a while after well, you get that, and he you didn't. should wear ear guards. Well, he didn't. And it blew back up. I wore ear guards the entire time I trained jujitsu. That's why I don't have any color. I have like really? little tiny pieces of cauliflower, uh-huh. little parts of my ear, but my ears are normal because they're supposed to be normal. Like, this is what I say to people, and I know you're a fighter, <laughs> but this is what I say to people that like love the look. Yeah. I go, take your ear and go like that and pinch it down and listen to things you and can. talk, ba 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 ba. Now let it go. Yeah. And oh, it sounds better, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, do you want it, the whole world <laughs> to be like this from now on? Well, I'll like, tell you, you, I tell you, I am tone deaf. I can't fucking sing, and that might be the reason why, because my cough <laughs> ears. But I don't think the words like blah 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 blah. Uh, but it sounds less like there's a reason why your ears designed that way. <laughs> it sort of yeah, to, to, captures to funnel, the sound waves and yeah. puts them through the ear canal. It's a very specific design by nature. Yeah. And if you fuck that up by <laughs> calcium deposits. <laughs> It's not smart. People are like, whoa, you fucking wear ear guards, you pussy. Uh, I was like, hey, man, I want to hear things. Yeah. People would make fun of me. and like, I don't care. Yeah. Say whatever you want. Like, I don't want my ears to be fucked up. <laughs> that cracks me up. Your ears, like, your ears are fucked up. Well, I mean, they are. They They're are, fucked right? up. They are. But how many guys do you know that can't even get earbuds in their ears? Because you, right? Yeah. You have to go over the ear because yep. your ears are so fucked up. Yep. Like, they don't stick in there because everything's hard as a rock. Yep. I hate it. I when hate it. When you're done fighting, you're going to get it cleaned out? Hell no. Ah, you like I'm, it. I'm going to still compete. I'm going right. to still compete, right? So, yeah. um, I, I don't, like, I've, I've thought about, like, if I got my ears like this, like, pinned back mm-hmm. a little bit, but I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. Just even like this, just out there and try to capture all the sound that it can with its big ass calcified. It's like, try to get yeah. everything, don't worry about it. Hard as a rock, Hard right? as a rock, oh yeah, hard as a rock. But so. that shit breaks off too sometimes. Uh, Did you see Mateus Gamrot and uh, oh, Benil Dariush like, yeah. early in the fight? That shit broke off and yeah. you start bleeding like crazy. Yeah. It's because it's a rock. Yeah, lucky You've for mine. you got a rock hanging off of your head. Yeah, lucky for mine, it hasn't broken off yet. So I got four more fights, and so hopefully four more fights and we're good. Hopefully Remember just... Sakuraba always used to have tape all over his ears yeah. and shit? His ears were fucked up. But how about his knees, man? He's, that's what I'm talking about, His right? legs were mummified. Like, there... he would mummify his <laughs> knees before competitions. I remember. Like, there has to be, you have to have, there has to be end in the tunnel, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like person I'm blown away by is Bibiana Fernandez. He's 41 years old and he's never had surgery in any injuries. I that's mean, crazy. That's for how, I mean, he's a five-time world Brazilian jiu-jitsu champion, dream champion, uh, one champion, uh, one champion, 
champion, the longest reigning, I believe. He's never had that fight with Lineker was nuts. Oh fuck, I know that was nuts. I know, but it's just like he st- stood in the pocket too long. He he dropped Lineker. Yeah, like he dropped Lineker, and he when he went to follow up, he said he was so emotional that like he was like, dude, I was fucking like, he goes, I dropped him, and he goes, DJ, that right hand came out of nowhere. I don't know where yeah. it come from. Um, but Lineker just wings, wings but it. they're like wrecking balls. Oh, if you get out of the way, you're good. Yep. But if you don't get out of the way, you're fucked. <laughs> you're fucked, man. Yeah. That dude hits so goddamn hard. I- I'll never forget uh, his ma- uh, John Lineker's manager, Alex uh, Alex Davis. Davis. He goes when he was fighting us, Cisco uh, Rivera. Uh, Cisco Rivera. He was in the mm-hmm. UFC. And he, uh, Francisco. Al- yeah. Francisco. He yeah. go. He goes. Don't stand with him. Just, right. just, 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 you know, I wrestle him. And he goes, okay, okay, okay. They started banging. And then uh, when John got hit, uh, Leonard got hit, he was like, oh, he punches like a pussy. So he just kept on fucking going. And then after the fight, uh, Leonard, uh, uh, Alex goes, I told you not to stand with him. He goes, oh, he punched like a pussy. So I figured he would go out before I would. And he goes, the kid's crazy, DJ. And I'm like, hey, hey, good for him. You know, some people have that, right? He's they, a bulldog. They man. have that bulldog and. You know, like Fabrizio Andrade was able to to capitalize on that, right? Yes. He was like, he's going to swing. When he does, I'm going to land that liver shot yes. over and over, right? Yes. So, I mean. Well, it's also a cumulative damage yeah. over a long career. Yeah. I mean, that dude has been banging for quite mm-hmm. a long time. Mm-hmm. And eventually, it's going to stop. Like, yeah, it's going. you can't just fight like that. Look at yep. Chuck Liddell. Yeah. Like, one day, the chin just goes. Yep. And yeah. it's and that's, that's what I say about rotting. One day, that chin's going to go. Yeah. Like, it's just. It's just human nature. Like, it's just going to go. But, man, before it goes, what a fucking show that guy puts on. Exactly. Just ride it. Ride it. Just yeah. enjoy the ride, right? It's just, uh, it's not, I mean, but not Rod Tang, because Rod Tang does have great technique Oh, 1,000%. 1, well. 1, He's, yeah, absolutely, there's no way better than him at that at, at that weight class, right? Like, when he fought um, a John Haggerty, and they were going back and forth, and how he crosses distance mm-hmm. and blocks in exchange, and boom, boom, and hit him to the body, and then went back to the body over and over again. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, like he, he is a brilliant in Muay Thai. He's not just you know a rock'em sock'em robot. Does he have any desire to fight MMA other than that he's, fight with you? He said he does. He said he wants to transition to mixed martial arts. Really? That's what he said. But you know, obviously, you know, it's you a long see, road. it's a long road. But Stamp Fairtex, she's been phenomenal in the transition to uh, mixed martial arts. Mm-hmm. Um, so if he gets with the right camp. But I feel like girls wrestling is not at the level that men's wrestling is. So when a woman is an elite striker, I feel like there's she can, a- Yes. Yeah. yeah, she has a better- uh, better, a better pathway. A better pathway, 1,000%. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you look at Joanna Jacek, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, perfect example. A perfect example, right? I mean, Claudia Godella and her, they're back and forth, it's like, if Clyde was just like, I'm gonna go in there and take you down, pass your guards to meet you, that that should have been the game plan, mm-hmm. right? Instead of trying to stand up with a fucking, I don't know how many times she's won a world title in uh, Muay Thai or whatever. Some or, crazy amount, yeah. It's, it's crazy amount. It's like the the game plan is to take her down, pass her guard, but but even Joanna, like now, you see that she just can't take it the way she used to take it before. Like exactly. The, the Thug Rose fight, mm-hmm. and then Zhang Wei Li knocks her out in the last fight. Yep. Like, but she's still not ready to. Completely hanging up I thought she yet. retired. Thought she's she... been talking lately, like not totally ready to... See, that's... Just, and that, yeah. for me, that's like the biggest thing. Like, uh, what, um, Will, he showed... Um, well, Harris, he showed me uh, a clip he did um, with Kamar Usman. Yeah, and I saw that clip. I where, saw that clip. Where he... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, where he talks about his body and... His body and just... Yeah. That's... The difficulties. The difficulties and, yeah. of that and that. Like, that's like the... Will's the best, man. Oh, yeah. The footage Will Harris gets is fucking phenomenal. Dude, that, He's the best documentary filmmaker yes. in uh, in the sport, period. Because he catches... Hands he, down. He captures the raw side of the yes. athletics... Of, of an athlete, right? Also, he's such a good guy that mm-hmm. everybody loves him. Yep. And so everybody opens up around him. Yes. And they relax around him. It's funny because my wife, she goes, now she's like... I don't want cameras in this house anymore. I'm done. Like, I don't want it in the house because all the footage I've ever taken over the years of my mixed martial arts career, I own none of it. Oh, none of it, yeah. right? And so I was like, people's got, people got video of me being pregnant on their fucking hard drive somewhere. So mm. no more, right? Yeah. But if Will want to come, we'll come over any time you want. I love Will. Oh, Will that's look, great. Look. So <laughs> she, she's opened the door to Will um, because he he he's like, if you want any content you want, you can have it. Like I just want to capture your moment and, and, and tell your story. 
And if I need, he say, hey, Will, I need, I need something. Can you keep, send me this? Absolutely, yeah. DJ. No, no if ands are about, no negotiating, no nothing. Here you go, player. Do your thing. So yeah, no, um, he's the best. Yeah, he's such a good dude too. And you know, I had him on recently, and you know, we were talking about dating apps. Oh, know, hey, you guys. <laughs> Will's addicted to those dating apps. <laughs> I know. Because, first of all, he's a beautiful man. He's gigantic. Yeah. And he gets bombed on. He was yeah. talking to me about it. He's in Austin. He goes, I've been Austin for one day. Look at all this shit. Yeah. I, They're just bombing on him. Yeah, they were the first make your dick feel good. Don't it? I, was like, I was like, oh my. Uh, like, Bro, I, his fucking Tinder looks like an Iraqi landing strip. Yeah. Just boom, boom. Just, <laughs> when, he, when he came to visit me, he goes, you know, I'm driving. I'm like, what you looking at? He goes, now look at this girl right here. Don't. What you think about this girl? He goes, <laughs> he goes, what I need, he goes, what I need is a fucking tech woman. Take care of me. Shit, let me get Jeff Bezos' wife. Shit. Uh, She'll never go in. I, I just laugh. And then when Jeff Bezos' wife just announced she's getting the, divorced, divorced yeah. I sent him a screenshot. I'm like, this is your chance. Better get over here quick. Better yeah. give her some of that. So Well, yeah, I don't know if you want that. <laughs> I got a joke about that a bit about like dating a, a woman who has that much money. Uh oh, it's, it's a real problem. <laughs> She's worth thirty eight billion dollars. Like Damn. you can't say shit in that relationship. You don't uh, you have know nothing what? to say. I think we'll be okay with that. He's like, as long as she let me film and document, I give her yeah. that BBC. We good to go. I ain't worried about nothing. That's that. That'll be that'll be his. He's response. done with the dating apps. He sent me a video that he goes, no more apps, and he's like good for him, him dancing in a, a, a hotel room with these uh, two girls. Like, uh, no more apps. <laughs> <laughs> zero apps. I, I, I think he's really done. Hey, good for him. Because if you want a real relationship, man, you can't have that many options. Yeah. Because you're not going to be concentrated on the person you're with. Absolutely. It's 1, just too, it's too, just too, too much. Too much distraction. Too much. Too much distraction. Because yeah. like he said, you're always chasing chasing for that next thrill. Right. Right. That's he's the thing, he's is the thrill. chasing that that hunt. And he wants a family. Yeah. You know, he's forty years old. Yep. Like you got it. You got to get off that horse yep. at and a you certain got, point in time. And, and you got to find the right one. Yeah. Right? The, the right one's got to be able to fill all those buckets. Yes. Right. But I don't think you find the right one when you're still looking for other no. ones. No, 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 no. I think there's a thing with people today, like that are that have access to these dating apps <laughs> and also have access to social media and DMs. I just think that you're overwhelmed by options. You, yeah, you can't like you're like ah, ah you're drowning in it. You <laughs> See, know? Th this is what I like. Uh, have you ever seen Bachelor in Paradise? No. Or do you know what the Bachelor and Bachelorette is? Yeah, I've, I've, I know about the show, but I've never watched okay, it. Okay, so I watch it with my wife, right? It's kind of our, our thing we do. And I hate watching The Bachelor and Bachelorette. The reason why is because you have one woman to 20 fucking dudes, right? right. So all these guys are fighting for one chick in that rose, right? Yeah. And the same thing with The Bachelorette. You had all these hot chicks trying to battle for one dude. But I'm like, you know, I guarantee if you throw another chick in there, I think, bet you things would be different. Oh, yeah. So in Bachelor in Paradise, they throw like 20 hot chicks and 20 hot dudes on an island, and they all try to figure out their relationship. And I'm like, yeah, when you have more fucking options, you're not going to be the, the hot commodity that everybody wants. But once you throw another, you know, a thing in there, another distraction, it just, it just, I like well, to see also, people navigate. they compete. They and, compete. And then, you know, and then there's like sexual competition. This girl won't do anything, but that girl fucks it's, everybody. Exactly, yeah, right? I so I, I never get, there was a one season where, uh, the guy, he was like, you know, they had the fantasy suites, right? I know it's kind of disturbing. I know all about this shit, but it is what it is. I don't know anything about okay, it. Okay, so, so fantasy suite. So fantasy suite is like, I think it's like the maybe it's the the home stretch, right? And it's usually there are four four people. Four. Oh, you get them down, so they eliminate people. They eliminate people. You get a rose, okay. they go home. You right? get a rose. <clears throat> That's how they do the it. The okay? dude gets a rose. The du dude and the chick gets a rose. <laughs> <They're> on who? <laughs> <laughs> so then it goes to fantasy fantasy suites. Here's fantasy a flower, suites. kick rocks. <laughs> <laughs> no, you get a flower, you get to stay. Oh, so it, how oh. it goes? So if I was on if I was on the Bachelor, right? I show up to this big ass mansion. Girls come in cars. Like, hi, my name is Elisa. I'm so happy right. to meet you. I'm like, oh, very nice to meet you. Go in the house. I'll be in there in a second. Twenty come. Then every week I have to send somebody home. They don't get a rose, right? Oh. So it gets down to the last four. Right, the last four, you have an opportunity to do fantasy suites, which means you get to stay the night in the hotel together with no cameras, do whatever you want. Right. Right. So typically, you know, the guys are depending on who, how they are, they'll either you know do the nasty or they won't. Right. So this guy cracked <laughs> cracked me up. So he has uh, four girls left. No, three girls left. I think it's four or three. Whatever. He, he sleeps with one. He brings one to the room, sleeps with her. Right, <clears throat> brings another girl to the room, sleeps with her. Right, and then the one girl that they're gonna go into fantasy, and she goes, you know, I think if you've been intimate with any other girl, I don't think I can go on with this 
this this relationship and he goes well i wish you would have told me that before because you know i, I maybe you know i wouldn't have done it like i told you i thought you told me to explore all my options and i did um and now you're 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 nagging me for it right and so she goes i'm i'm leaving i'm going home right so she goes home Go to the, the final rose ceremony. Who's going to pick who his wife is or who's going to propose to? He goes. You have to propose at the end of the. Uh, an engagement. There's usually an oh engagement. Oh my God. <laughs> On a fucking television show? Really? <laughs> I, I'm ignorant to this. I didn't know how stupid so, it is. So I just, I love to see the, the demeanor, but it gets better. Oh. So I'm sitting there watching with my wife and I'm like, he done banged both these chicks and they don't even know it yet, right? So he goes, I have to tell you both that I've been intimate with you. And you, they both start crying. He goes, I didn't mean for this to happen. Da, da, da. I fell in love with both of you guys. I'm oh, sorry. Right. Boy. So he, so when it ends up happening, he doesn't get any of the girls, but he slept with both of them. Right. Then I told Dexter, I was like, I guarantee you, he going to get that other, he going to get, he going to bang that third one. I bet you. Right. The one that left. The one that left. Right. Sure enough. The one that left came back crawling. He gets with her, you know, they do the nasty. And then next, you know, they break up like three months recently, like I think four months ago. And I was like. Babe, I told you he banged all three of them. He's a legend. Nobody's ever done it before in bachelor history. She goes, "You're such." You're such. <laughs> so, but there's so many options, and but there's no way under that kind of scrutiny and all those people watching. <laughs> well, no way. A, you're gonna be yourself. Yeah. Right, because you know you're putting on a show. Yeah, yeah. And there's no way. B, it's gonna last because there's this whole thrill of this thing that you've become some, addicted to. Some have lasted and have really? children. Oh yeah, I'm shocked too. Trust me. Like I said, this is. I'm shocked. Some of last time have beautiful relationships, oh, beautiful babies, nice. married. So it, it does work out in the end. But then you're every once in a while you have this man who's taking advantage of the system. Well, <laughs> <laughs> is he? Is he? He's just doing man things, normal man. That's not taking advantage. That's being a human. But it's to me, it's like uh, celebrity rehab. Like that's the worst oh, way yeah. ever to get clean. Yeah. And bachelorette shows or bachelor shows. That's the worst way it's ever to be in a relationship with someone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fucking cameras in your face, like. <laughs> Who the fuck are you? You don't even know who you are. You're you're putting on a show. Yeah. No. And you're trying to compete. Yeah. It's 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 something interesting, like you said. When you have those distractions and those dating apps. Yeah. I mean, that's where, you know, it ran down that rabbit hole of But for people like Will that are real busy, it's it's really hard to meet someone. Yeah. Well I went you know? I, I was gonna try to hook him up with one of the girls who um a family friend who's a real estate agent, she's killing it, and she's like, I don't need no man. And I'm like that's right. That's a perfect. You know, you right. meet somebody, you become friends. You know, your best friend becomes your lover. And in, in, yes. in my case, right. So that's why I was like, I can. I, can, you know, I show Will a picture. Will is interested. He goes, mm, Look at her. He goes, All right. When I come back up here, get some work done. You gonna have to. We gonna have to do dinner. And I was like, Okay, I got you. So, you know, I know he wants to move to Dubai or whatnot, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, he loves Dubai. He's mm -hmm. like, There's no crime. Everybody's cool. Yeah. When he says when he. When he was talking about like being <clears throat> an African American and, and worried about certain situations or another black man trying to get him, he was like, well, "What what the hell happened in this world?" I mean, I can understand that, like not having that fear when you're over there, you don't have to worry about things like that. Yeah, but crime I've never been there. So. Violence. He says it's so safe. Yeah. He said if someone drops a diamond, like you could just like don't worry about it; they'll turn it into the police. That's great. Yeah, That's awesome to hear. Yeah, but also like you know. They don't have any free speech. Yeah. You know, you have to be very careful with what you do and what you say. Yep. You know. Yep. You can't have both. You, you, oh. One's got to go. One's got to go, right? Oh, God. <laughs> what is it like in Washington now? Because, like, the Seattle is kind of fucking chaos, right? <laughs> Man, once, uh, so once after COVID, once COVID-19 happened, my wife was like, I want to, I want to move. I was like, okay. And so. Where'd she want to move to? Arizona. Really? Yeah, because she has friends out there, and she went out there during COVID nineteen, <clears throat> and she was there. And she goes, everything's still open. There's no mask. The children aren't wearing masks, and everybody's still in school. So my wife was like, if we can have a house in Arizona, I would really, really love it. So we got a house in Arizona, <clears throat> and now me being here in Austin, in, in Texas, Austin, Austin, Texas, and feeling the vibe, the good weather, and like the food, the people. It's like, fuck, man. Like, it reminds me of Arizona. Like, I want to move to Arizona and be there full time just because just the mm -hmm. atmosphere is different and the weather is good. Um, in Washington, it's rainy, it's cloudy. It's not good for your mind. That's what she said. It's not. Yeah. That seasonal depression shit, she, that's real. She hates it. She's like, I hate it. Get out while your kids are young. Yeah, but 
you know, it's just, I, I just can't yet. I, I don't think I can. I think, like, we're going to keep- Because of training. For and, training. Yeah. Uh, we'll, keep, we'll keep that house. Like, that house, I ain't never selling that house. Why don't you, why don't you go down there and train with Henry? Shit, that's how it all started, baby. Oh, triple C. Um, yeah. I'm going down He's there. He's doing some amazing shit down there, man. Dude, he is. That fight ready, that's that's oh, an amazing uh, camp. The scientific that uh, is, aspect of it. The, yeah. His, I, see, I love Henry, okay? Let me, let me tell you, let me tell you a thing. This is how- I think we get along so well, right? So I talked to him, I called him. I was like, hey, Henry, like, I got a house out here. Can I come train? He goes, absolutely, Demetrius. He goes, I think we do we do great things. But but, but before we before we train, like, I want to sit down and I want to show you something. I was like, I was like, oh, fuck, Henry. Please don't try to sell me on something. Just Can we just vibe out together? I go to his house and we're, we're talking to him and his wife and his beautiful baby, America. And we're sitting there, I see my fucking pillow on his couch and all those pillows and whatnot. And he's showing me his book and he, he started breaking down like his mindset and how he approaches his training and his fights. And I was like, okay, all right. Cause you, I fought him twice. Right. Right. And I already knew he was already good and brilliant. But when we get to actually sit down and vibe off each other, that's when I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to come back out here. I'm going to train for 10 days. What is his mindset? Like what is special about it? <sighs> You know, they're talking about him fighting Aljamain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he'll be fighting against Aljamain. I'm I, excited about that. I, I think he beats Aljamain. Like, do you really? I do. Aljamain's a bad motherfucker, dude. He, he is. And so, two things. One, Aljamain's very bad. He's starting to come in his own. He's starting yes, to brace. right now, he's, he's a their, champion. He's a champion. He's starting to brace that backpack roll, getting heavy on people, mm -hmm. crossing distance, taking him down, getting on their back, locking up the body triangle. He's very long, very big for the weight class, right? He's perfect for the He's weight class. perfect for the weight class, right? Yeah. So where I think Henry's going to be able to excel, where other people have falter, right, is Henry is an amazing wrestler. Yeah. Right? Olympic gold medalist. Olympic gold medalist. Two, Henry is probably the most disciplined person I've ever trained with. What I mean by that is that, so Henry will look at somebody and be like, okay, where can I beat him at? Okay, that's where I could beat him at. We're not leaving there. We're staying there. Like, when we're talking about the Domino Cruz fight, he was like, I'm going to kick his fucking legs. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to kick his legs. And we're watching. He's doing his thing, his dance, and his faint, faint, low kick. He's waiting, waiting. Sometimes he will get off track, but he'll reel himself back in, back into fighting. Where when me and him train, it was good because he was like, you're, he goes, you're a killer. I was like, what do you mean? He goes, you don't do anything we talked about. Like, you're just... You just want to push, 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 push. I was like, yes, because he needs to be finished. He needs to not die, but I wanted to pose my will on him. Like when I was going to get ready to fight Adriano, he goes, no body kicks. Do not throw any body kicks. Kick his legs, then the hands will come. I guarantee you. I guarantee, right? What's the first fucking thing I do when I fight Adriano? Body kick. Body kick. And, he, and then Henry says, if you throw a body kick, he's going to catch it and take you down. And sure enough, he did that. But that's where me and him thrive because we we uh, question each other's skill set on a humble way. That mm -hmm. makes sense. Right. So, testing it. Testing it, right? And so I think if, when he decides to come back, he'll be fine against Aljo because he he's just fucking smart. Well, he's a wizard. You know, when he fought Wilson Hayes, mm -hmm. that was uh, I was like, look at this motherfucker. He looks like a karate champion. Yep, yep. Remember he was standing yeah, yeah. sideways he's like sideways, Wonder Boy? Yep. And now he's trying to transition. He's trying to he's changing it, right? He's always changing it. Yes. Right? And when I went out there training with him, I was like, dude, I was like, I can make your clinch game fucking nasty. Like, you're with your wrestling pedigree. Arizona. Oh yeah, yeah, no, Maybe no, no. You need to move. Yeah, well, Get I'm gonna... to that sunlight. <laughs> Get to that sunlight. It might make you better. Vitamin D, always good for the brain. I mean, you you do speak a lot of truth there, yeah, Joe. I mean, fuck rain, bro. Rain's good, like here. What I love about Austin, it rains occasionally. Yeah. So you appreciate the sun. Yeah. yeah. But I don't. I can't fuck with the place that rains it's, all the time. I think if I didn't have my friends and family in right. Washington, that's I the think that's the that it's. I don't want to say it's a problem. That's what's keeping me. That's what's yeah, keep but me attached. you're a fun guy. You'll make I, new friends. No, I have a very no. tight. Sm I have a very small circle, mm -hmm. and I don't like to open up Maybe or take Matt Hume to Arizona. Say, hey, Matt. <laughs> yeah, right. Come Matt's got his kids, and his life out there too. I and get it. Look, um, I had my life in California. Yeah, and look, exactly. My wife, Destiny, she's she's like, I'm ready to move right now. You should, you say the word, baby. We gone. You know. So I think it'd be very interesting to see you full time with Henry. No, oh, fuck. Very interesting. We would probably, it's funny, we're training, and then I did something. I did like a, 
like I was fully mounted and I, instead of staying in the mountain and pounding a guy out, I went to triangle. Like I stepped over and triangled him and went to my back and finished triangle. He goes, why did you do that? I'm like, why the fuck not? He goes, I would have stayed up top and pounded him. I was like, yeah, but I just ended the fight. Who knows? He could have turtled. He could have did this. So we bounce off each other. And I'm like, right. dude, like your grappling is so good that you need to start finishing people with your, your submissions. Jiu- with submissions. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but... So we vibe off each other. So we're gonna go. I'm gonna go out there and train. Um, There's no one right way. Exactly, and that was a biggest eye opener I had when I trained with him. And for him to say, he was like, "D, he he calls me Demetrius. He goes, Demetrius, you're a high volume athlete. Your conditioning is w- off the charts. You're nine weeks out from your fight, and you're already in shape." He goes, "I'm worried about you." I'm like, "I'm fine. Like I'll take time off." To where he is a. Um, He's worried about you peaking too early. Peaking too early. But he is a precise. He is move very little, move, 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 right hand. Right. Left kick, right hand, left hand. Smoke, smoke, right hand. He's very precise what he does. Where mm-hmm. me, I'm just like flowing. I'm flowing. I'm like one, one, two, up, six, three, two, nine, nine, uh, knee, double leg takedown, pass. And he goes, yeah. you can do that because you have the energy for it. And I was like, exactly. So when he told me that, it almost came for me to come on my own as an athlete. You know, but he's a different frame than you. Exactly. Like he's cutting a lot of weight. Yeah. He cut a lot of weight to make twenty five mm-hmm. and missed it a few times. Right? Yes. Yes. And, but at thirty five, he's a fucking beast. Yeah. Now I think he's walking. When I was there, he's probably at one sixty five now. Right. So he's always been. He's got a little tortillas. He's got. He's got tortillas. He's got that. He's, he's got, got that enchilada. He's got and, that retirement body. That's yeah. what that is. But not quite. I mean, no, he's, he's, he's losing, he's losing weight. weight. Yep. Yeah. He's in the USADA pool, I believe, as well. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm super excited for him to come back if he does come back. I'm very interested in that fight with him and Aljamain. That's a very interesting fight to me. What he needs to do is just go out there, control distance, throw body kicks. Well, he probably fucking won't because, I mean, you know, he doesn't like to get taken down. Throw body kicks, but throw things up the middle because Aljo, the thing, backpack, big, he's coming in his own, but his stand-up is not rhythm. He has no rhythm on his feet. What do you mean? So rhythm is like, you know, when I'm here, Aljo is not like this. He's not, pop, 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 like, pop, pop. Mm-hmm. he's not a rhythm. It's like. Right. It's not flowy. It's not like smooth, like a kickboxer. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's kind of unorthodox, right? Mm. You watch Henry. Henry's here. He's moving. It's very like he's dancing a little bit. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying Aljo doesn't have rhythm. I'm saying that his 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 stand-up is a little more unorthodox, which mm-hmm. that's going to give Henry problems when they fight. He likes a lot of front kicks up the middle, too. A lot too. of front kicks up the middle, too. Right? Yeah. Which Henry will catch that, and it can wrestle, and we'll see who's a better wrestler. Mm. Um, but that's that's what I see when I when I break down that fight. I'm like, okay, well, I don't... Ajo's stand-up is kind of like... The last fight was very unfortunate that TJ's shoulder was that fucked up going into the fight, but I had heard that. You know, I had heard his shoulders were fucked. That shit has not changed since WC days. You know how many times I've been in, like, line... Because every single time you fight... The doctor checks you, like, raise your hands, squeeze, up, right. down, left, right, check your shoulders, your knees. I remember I was getting ready to fight in WEC, and Tony Bonwell has fought with a broken hand. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I broke my fucking hand. I got to fight. Because when you fight, you get that insurance. Right. And you, when you, any damages you cure on fight night, they cover it 100% with insurance. So, you know, looking at it as an athlete standpoint, here's TJ. He's 36. Right. He's 36 years old. He's healthy. He's like, I don't know if I'm going to get another shot, you know. But his shoulders were fucked a long time ago. Oh, yeah. I know that. I mean, he, he, he had said, massive he, tears in his supraspinatus. Well, he said it, it, it tore, it came out of his socket, what, 20, 20 time, times? 20 times in, in training camp. Yeah. But this is how we make our money. Like, who is it? I get it? it. Aaron Pico, when yeah. he was fighting, he was mm-hmm. like, don't stop this fight. This is how I make my fucking money. Right. Right. Like, well, he's trying to put it back in. Well, exactly. Yeah. But, but think about that mindset. This yeah. is how I make my money. Right. Right. Like, I need to do whatever I can to make that. Well, also, he's just trying to win. Oh. Aaron was still trying to win. Yeah, absolutely. But he missed with a left hook, right? And it just popped out. Who, Aaron? Aaron? Or, yeah, um, Aaron. I didn't see uh, what happened that led to him, the shoulder pop out. I just yeah. saw the highlight of him, like, like trying to get back in. He yeah. was like, don't stop the fight. That's how I make my money, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, which is the truth. So I think for TJ, he was like, this is how I make my money. I got one opportunity. I'm going to put it back in and fight yeah i just think tj's shoulders were already fucked up mm. before the retirement and before the time off from popping hot for oh PMs. really yeah uh, no his shoulders have been fucked forever see 
And once again, you yeah. only can do this for so long. Yes. Right? So yeah. that's why I tell myself, like, you have you have to stop. Like at some point in time. You have to stop. Like what I, is the biggest injury that you've ever had? Oh God. Um I'll say shoulders. Like I still have problems with my shoulders just from years of wrestling, mm-hmm. shooting and filling all the weight, mm-hmm. going bigger guys, because I'm the smallest guy in the gym. Um I would say my shoulders. Shoulders are always fucked for uh, for wrestlers. Yeah, because you're carrying all that weight, mm-hmm. right? And then you know my main sparring partner is Matt. You know, right. so and he's like 170, 170, 175. Then next down the list is James. He's like 165. And then Tony, he's about 190. Mm-hmm. And then at my jujitsu place, the closest person to my size is the women. But I don't. I grapple with the women sometimes. But then I'm grappling with the bigger guys, so I'm always carrying a lot of that weight on my. Another reason for you to go down to Arizona. (laughs) That's one thing that's nice. They have bodies on bodies. But now we have, since we uh, combined with Charlie's gym, now we have Bilal, amazing 125er. Uh, We have uh, Javi. We have some smaller guys. But when I went to um, Arizona, holy fuck, man! There was a two-time national champion, AJ Reese. Gas amounts with him. You had um Jose. Like there's probably like from 125 to 155. There's probably like maybe 30 guys. Don't you think that's better for your career? Yeah, but it could also be horrible for my career because you're gonna get injury prone. Why would you get injury prone if you're training with guys your size? Because you're training with bigger guys. Because you're 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 competing with those guys all single every single time. I know what you're getting at. Like if I'm competing with smaller guys, I wouldn't have to carry the weight, but you're also in a room full of fucking killers that are trying to make it to the next level. So always testing themselves. So you know how they say iron sharpens iron, uh-huh. but also iron breaks iron, right? So how hard are they training down there? Like, oh, they go, they, they go, go hard. Henry does his own thing, right? Henry, in what way? In what way where Henry's like, he doesn't train. Like when we were, when we were down there, I was like, are we going to spar Henry? He goes, no, I don't need to spar. I don't, I don't need, I don't know, I know what hell feels like. I don't need to experience that. So when Henry's not in training camp, he's not training. Like if I was like, hey, Henry, let's do five rounds. He'll get through it because he's mentally tough and, you know, he's a competitor. But my condition will be way beyond his just because I'm like, I did 20. You're always in shape. I'm always in training. Like I did, you know, when I did uh, New Wave, I did, me and Gary grappled for 20 minutes straight, like nonstop, just going back and forth, back and forth. And... I was like, we can do another 20 if we want to, right? <clears throat> so Henry does his own thing to where the team does their own thing. And I think the team, they spar three days a week there. And so I think if I trained with a whole bunch of killers like that, I think I'll be injury prone. Mm. I think I'll, I'll sustain more injuries in my career. Hmm. Or I could be wrong, Joe. Maybe you're right. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> if you would be. I mean, I think if you're training with Henry, he'd probably be very smart in how he approaches your because he would probably want to try to make you the best that he can make you. Yeah, but I don't. I like to train. I like to push out of camp, right? right Where I don't course. know. If, I don't know if he want if he does. So that's that's where the difference I I think would come down to. When you were talking about his mindset, we we got to derail oh, yeah. a little bit there. So his mindset, he's like this. He was like, we sat down. He goes, if you were to fight John Jones, what would you do? I was like, I'll get all over John Jones. He goes, you would get all over John Jones? I was like, yeah, I'll put the pressure on him. I would beat him up in the clinch. I would take him down, pass his guard, and submit him. That's what I would do. And he goes, see, I would do, you know, he has six different areas where he's like, okay, there's uh, balance. You're sitting there. You're not overcommitting or you're just chilling. You're, you're reacting. Then he has one that says commit. You have to take risk, right? The risk management. Then there's another category where it's like um, counter. So he has these six categories that he lives in. And when he's looking at the person he's going to fight, he'll sit there and look at his his categories and be like, okay, do we take risk with this guy? Okay, if we take risk with this guy, here's the, here's the pros, here's the cons. If we stay balanced, where we're neutral, right? Here's the pros, here's the cons. And he sticks by that. So in his whole training camp, eight, eight weeks, it's by that book. He does not deviate from that. And when we're, and this is something he's developed on his own. The, I believe he's developed on his own. Like when he showed me that, like that's where we're two different animals, right? Where mm. it's like, yes, you. He's like, and then then he'll switch up. He goes, sometimes you have to take that risk in order to get that, you know, to get that reward. But how much of that risk do you want to take? How how much you put your eggs in that basket? Where for me, I'm like, nope, I'm going out there and I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm putting the pressure. I want to overwhelm you, like with my skill set and my conditioning. And once once you 
can't take the overwhelming, then that's when you succumb to whatever it is you decide to, you pick your poison and now make sure you die that way. Mm. So that's where we're different. Like when we sit there, like I have the same mindset, but I just, I deviate off that path. Like I just like, nope, I'm gone. I'm, I'm gone. I'm, let me do my thing. Like when I'm sparring, Matt, I'm like, hey, I want you to, you know, I want you to try to get this out. I'm like, okay, I'll try. Then once shit starts going, I'm just like doing my own thing. And then he was like, that's not what I wanted you to do. And I'm like, yeah, I know that. But uh, hey, we got, the, we got the job done though, right? Right. So that's <laughs> where Henry, he will stay to it. He'll, he'll, he'll spend the whole round kicking legs, kicking legs, kicking legs. I'm like, I'm bored, dude. Like, I'm not going to spend five minutes kicking those legs. I need a show kick, fly knee. Like when we're play sparring, like I do a fly knee and shoot for a takedown. He goes, you're just all over the place. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of fun. I like it that way. <laughs> So obviously it's worked out for you though. Yeah, that was I mean, so. how could you argue that your approach is bad? And that's a beautiful thing. He doesn't say my approach is bad. He says the approach is different for everybody. It seems like I'm convincing you to go to Arizona. No, you're not. No. I feel like I should be. <laughs> I'll tell him, hey Matt, we had a good ride, baby. I'm done. Henry, here I come. No. Well, listen, Matt could fly in every now and then. Yeah, he could, but it's I like I like the responsibility uh, as a father to get my kids to school. Like yes. when I'm in training camp, I don't stop. Like when I'm in training camp, I'm working on the bars. I'm working on, you know, a portable consultants. I'm working on my businesses while taking care of my children while training for my fights. Like I like to have my plate full because mm-hmm. it keeps my brain stimulated. It doesn't let me, it just keeps me going. And you don't think you could do that and have a life similar to that in Arizona? I, I don't think so because I, I just, I have to start over from scratch. Like I just have don't to. Don't you think that would help your mind too? The beginner's mindset, starting over from scratch. Mm, maybe, but I'll miss my friends and my routine. And like, like mm-hmm. I would move to Arizona. I got two. I got four more fights left. That's two years. Right. Right. So, I'm 38, 39 years old. Then it's going to come down to: Do I leave my father-in-law? Do I leave my mother-in-law? Do I leave my mom? Do I leave my best friend? my my children's best friends like that's the thing that's going to come over that's going to i'm gonna have to battle with you know what i mean yeah so two years is nothing right two i mean i'll fight twice next year then i'll decide do i want to continue to fight or not do one of my businesses become a unicorn and take off i'm like i don't need to fight anymore i got enough money i got i got enough money i need to fight right so then i'm like okay then we'll revisit do we move to arizona get some, some more sunshine and weather and pull the kids out or do we just go back and forth where it's like hey my wife was just in Arizona for five days, and she came back home, and she goes, it's fucking weather. <laughs> Can't believe you're here. She woke up one day, and I was like, <sighs> we're in bed. She wakes up. She looks at her, she goes, what are we fucking doing? I was like, what's wrong, baby? She goes, you see this? You see them fucking clouds? She goes, huh. So nice in Arizona. It's just so hard to be here when I know what's out there with the beautiful weather. And I was like, I know. That's babe, the thing is once you go to a place where it's sunny all the time and yep. you realize how much better it is for your brain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see I see those eyes, Joe. I see those, I see those eyes. <laughs> I would live in Arizona in a heartbeat. I love it down there. Yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, just the people, the food, the food choices. Yeah, there's a lot of that. A lot of that. And it's it's a great community. My be- one of my best friends just moved down there. Uh he lo- he moved to Tucson. Uh and he, he's like, I don't I don't want to move to Tucson. I want I wanted to move closer in the middle because he used to live in um uh that's right next to the border of Mexico. Is that Tijuana? I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's like, I used to live in Tijuana. Nothing goes on good in Tucson. And so I, I always tell him, we have this joke where he, I say, pussy run that house, not dick. And he'll call me and I, he'll be like, hey man, you want to play video games today? I'm like, nah, nah, I can't. I got to do some laundry and I got to uh, wash this. He goes, yeah, I knew. I knew you was soft. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he, goes, he goes, pussy run that house, not dick. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> then, I, then I try to get him back again. I would sit there and wait and the other day, I was like, "Hey man, I'm playing. Um, cycle, I'm playing cycle. You want to jump on?" He goes, nah, "I gotta, I gotta cook dinner." And I was like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I know." How do you have time to play video games? Because that is the great time suck. Uh, video games will absorb your life. I don't. I don't look at it as a time suck. I look at it as a coping coping skill for mm. me. Um, so I have the where I find the time is great balance, great support from the wife, um, and. At the beginning of our marriage and our relationship, she never understood it. Shit, hell, I'm still finding out new things why I enjoy playing video games. It's very stimulating. It's very stimulating. But for me, growing up, it was me, my my brother, uh, and my sister, and my mom. 
and we come from a very poor background. So the one thing we did together that bonded us was playing video games, right? And so now being an adult, it's the only thing I have close to my childhood that brings me back to those times, if that makes sense, right? So when I'm playing video games with my friends, we're laughing, we're having a good time, we can all... Uh, what's the word? Share the same passion mm-hmm. playing video games. Where my buddy Chris, he's not gonna, he's not an athlete. He's not gonna fight, right? So we can't, we can't, we can't vibe on that level. And it's just something I, I truly love to do. Yeah, let that shit come out. Do you um, <laughs> ever feel like it takes up too much time? Uh, it 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 can when I don't prioritize, right? Because don't get me wrong. It is a big time sink. When it's I was a lot, man. when I was playing World of Warcraft, right? Here's oh, a funny. That's st- a crazy one. Yeah, here's a funny story. So I was me and my wife. Uh, we didn't have any kids. My wife. It was uh, my father-in-law's birthday, and we have a family recipe that he loves apple pie that's been passed down from the great great grandma to grandma now to destiny, and so it takes about three hours to make from scratch. She peels some um, apples and makes a crust herself, all from scratch. So my wife's like, hey, what are you doing? I was like, hey, do you mind if I play World of Warcraft? I'm going to play, uh, we're about to raid Karazhan, which is one of the raids in the, uh, <laughs> the Burning Crusade. And she goes, how long is it going to take? Usually it takes three hours to clear, right? And you don't want to leave because if I leave, then who's going to replace me as a DPS? Damage per second, right? So we're going, we're going to Nightbane, right? We're going up and we start fighting them and we're fucking getting killed every single time. My wife comes in there. Destiny, she comes in, she goes, hey, babe, how much longer? I was like, oh, by another hour, which I knew that wasn't true. I knew we, we still had two and a half hours left, right? The three-hour mark comes up. She goes, hey, are you done? I was like, yeah, I'm not. And three hours later, I'm still playing the same fucking three game. Three hours later. Still playing the same game, same spot, right? We would die, respawn, die, respawn, die, respawn. I was like, right, guys, I gotta call it. Like, I'm I'm six hours past time. I'm supposed to be off here. Then I go I go out I go out the living room and she's sitting there. She goes, okay, you gotta make a choice. It's either me or World of Warcraft. I was like, bye, wow, I'm out, deuces. Wow. From that point, I took a huge step away from gaming. Like I was like, I have to I have to put away because I could not prioritize what was more important. Right? They're obsessive. Those they're they're, games, very, they're very, very obsessive. Very obsessive. Yeah. But then now with streaming, Twitch, I've been able to monetize it and meet amazing people that I would have never met uh, through gaming. Are you making money off of Twitch? Um, I just recently switched to YouTube because of all the Twitch bullshit. So what's the Twitch bullshit? Well, just you know, me, me, and Jane were talking about it. Uh, so I, I don't want to say Twitch bullshit. Can I be more positive? Yes. So. With Twitch, I find it hard, and I struggle with that. I've been streaming on the platform for nine years, and I haven't seen any growth. And that could be from my part, too, of not, you know, grinding is hard. But at the point in time when I was grinding, I was making probably about, like, 2500 bucks a month and just playing video games, right? I was able to cover mortgage. But my life was I would wake up, train after my first training session, go next door, stream for two hours, go next door, back to AMC, train for another two hours, Drive home, shower, kiss my wife, eat dinner, go back downstairs and stream. I had no life. That's all I did was stream. Stream, 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 stream. And I was able to monetize and make good money. And then I sat down and I was like, I'm not having fun anymore. This is not. It's a job. It's a job. Like, I don't, I don't want that. Right? And so then you start seeing girls utilize the platform in a different way. But the hot tub streams. I, hey, I ain't hating on them. I'm happy they were able to capitalize. What I'm, Hot tub streams? Okay, let, let me let me give you... I, you don't spend much time on the internet, so let me go ahead. And, well, you do watch people get murdered, but let me let me tell yeah, you... Yeah, but that's not much time. <laughs> I know. It's like 30 seconds. Oh, I got his fucking head chopped off. I've huh? cut my time down substantially. <laughs> yeah. So pretty much people would do... You hear all this... I, there, you go, there it is. Hot tub streams? Oh, no. Pools, hot tubs, and beaches. So that... What is that? A uh, whole channel? That's a what, whole that channel. That doing... Yoga in her underwear. What Hilarious. Do you think, what do you think they're doing? What do you think they're trying to sell right there? Pussy. Okay. Boy. So, I didn't know that that existed. It Jesus does exist. Christ. How many girls? That's 40, popular porn That girl's star. only got 44 <laughs> viewers? Oh, that's just, that might not even be her stream. She's a popular porn star? Very popular. She's and working so her way up. She's working she her way up. She streams in a bikini? And this is Are the, you allowed to be naked? Like, no, you cannot. That, that, that qualifies, uh, you break the... 
content code. Click, click, click on this. What is, this so is, what is this? Top, this is the top female streamer. Yeah, she fucking Her. kills it. Kills it. A million it. a month. A couple million dollars a month? Yeah. yeah. Wow. But see, boom, right here. Oh, Why this is, is this ad that popped up? This ad that pops up. But she doesn't dictate what this ad is. She has no say so what this ad is, right? Yeah, but for a couple million bo- dollars a month, I bet she doesn't give a fuck. So th- this was a new thing in the platform that, that came to you, right? So Streaming in your underwear. Yes. Yeah. So for me, after nine years on Twitch, I was like, okay, I want to try something new. I, I want to so try- you're streaming your underwear now? No, I'm streaming on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are a couple people who told me to do hot tub streams. Like, dude, can you stream in the hot tub? I was like, you want to see my half naked body? Don't you see it enough when I'm fighting? Right. He goes, he goes, I think it'd be great to see you in the hot tub, man. I'm like, ban and get him out of here now. <laughs> <laughs> Put your pants on, yeah, sir. Exactly. So I switched over to YouTube. Um, that's been fun. Been able to make content on there. That's been great. So this is a girl. Uh, I like how the the reverse angle. Yeah. Uh, the mirror. Yeah. yeah. So th- it's like, Everyone like, so she's. That. They have a mirror. Yeah. yeah, doesn't everyone? Oh Jesus! And so I get the uh, <laughs> attraction. So that's the thing that it's going. And then now they have now they have poker. They had a big thing. I everyone was complaining about poker because people will gamble on on Twitch, and people were like, "Donate, give me your money, and I'll gamble it." Right? And people were like, "There's some people like, oh, I that shouldn't be allowed." There's some people that say it should be allowed. So all that I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna step away from Twitch. I'm gonna try YouTube, and so far YouTube's been great. Um, I've had a YouTube channel for a long time, but I've been trying to not post any MMA content, right? Like, I don't want to have any mixed martial arts just because I want to be known for something else besides mixed martial arts. Right. So I love YouTube because my channel is not dead when I'm not live. I'm only monetizing when I'm live on Twitch. Oh, I see. So people can go to your channel and watch the old videos. Watch the old videos. Oh. And, and the algorithm on YouTube is so much better than Twitch. So if you're a small streamer on, on Twitch... You're never gonna get discovered. It's very, 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 very hard. There's so many people on. There's so many people, and there's no algorithm to to pick you up. I switched to YouTube, and people are like, "I didn't even know you had a YouTube channel. I didn't know you stream." I'm like, "I've been streaming for fucking nine years. How do you not know I didn't stream?" And so then I read the comments, and I comment back on the comments in the on the YouTube channel, and then somebody says, "Oh my God, thank God for the algorithm, because I would never find your channel." When Mm. I see that, I'm like, "Ah." And then if I do a reaction video, people send me stuff, and I'll react it to uh, fake martial arts. And I'll sit there and just laugh about it and give my honest opinion about it. And people love and eat it up. And then it's still getting views. And I'm still be able to get ad revenue and the monetization I on see. it. So that's why I switch over to YouTube. But it's all, all for a passion. Like, I don't, I'm not relying on that money to be... To pay my bills. Right, right, so you're not thinking of it as a job like no, you it's for fun. were doing with Twitch for a while. Yeah, for Twitch, I was like, if I want to be good, I have to stream all the time. YouTube is like, I stream when I want to, and then I do a couple uh, reaction videos, leave it up there, and then when I'm not streaming right now, people are probably watching the YouTube video and be good. That makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, YouTube does have amazing algorithms. Yes. And if you're doing something like that, it makes sense. Yeah. The problem with YouTube for what I do is there's a lot of censorship. And, yes. And especially when you talk about controversial things yep. like, you know, COVID or anything yep. along those lines, like they'll They try to cancel you. Channel. They try to cancel you, Joe. YouTube didn't. <laughs> they were they were I mean, they I was already gone. I was already on Spotify, which mm-hmm. Spotify is pretty great about that yep. stuff. But if you're uh, a person and you get hit with a strike, like YouTube only has like three strikes. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they'll pull your whole fucking channel. That's the hardest thing. So uh that's the hardest thing I've been trying to uh, get around is me being on YouTube. It's like you can't play music, right? Or it's gonna right. be copyright, right? right? So my brother, my long lost brother, I just met after thirty five years on this planet. Oh uh, wow! Oh man, I, I don't I don't know how much time we have, but we have a whole. I have a, I just met my father five years ago, oh changed my, my life. So, but my brother, he's a musician and he does beats. And so I reached out to him. I was like, hey dude, like, can you make me some synthwave music that I can, you know, play on my YouTube channel? And so he's doing it, and he's uh he's doing he does pretty good beats. And I like synthwave. Do you know what synthwave is? No. Synthwave is kind of like a eighties, nineties rock uh, rock um action action hero oh, okay so it's kind of like that so he's making me beats so that way i can u- play music when i'm streaming on and it's not copyright it's not copyright right. I, I own the rights to it right so and on twitch you're allowed to play music no same thing you can't either so but uh, when i streamed on twitch i didn't i didn't really care about it i think uh youtube they're way quicker to get it up like it's a copyright right. change right. no monetization you're done right? right so twitch you can play music and you still get monetized you can mm-hmm. still monetize uh the stream itself so um, but yeah, I like uh, YouTube. It's fun so far. 
Well, it's beautiful that you have so many different things that you're doing. You yeah. know, that you do have options outside of fighting because that is one of the biggest problems that f- athletes have when they retire from mm-hmm. the sport. You give so much of your life to this one individual thing, and then a lot of guys are really lost yeah. when it's over. Yep. So it's very smart that you're planning yeah. with these businesses. And by the way, these bars, we should tell people about them one more time. Yep. Quantum Energy Square, they're very good. They're yep. really good. It does have like healthy fats in it and caffeine, and they taste good, man. Yep. Um, and it's yeah. in all your, you know, we just got, we're also in REI. Um, oh, all Whole Foods and uh, yeah, these would be great to take on hikes and shit like that. Yep, that's where yeah. we. Um, I take it when I go to with the kids, <clears throat> and I'm at to eat out there, so it's good. And that's one of the things I never want to be lost, right? I never want to get lost, and that's why, even after my last fight when I won, I was like, man, I did this wrong, I did this wrong, and then Matt was like, dude, you just became a fucking world champion at 36 years old again without me in your corner. Like, let's let's take a step back and enjoy the moment, mm. right? Um. And that's why I don't want to get lost in that. I don't want to succumb to that ego or right. you're the GOAT. It's like, hey, you know what? We won. How do we get to the end game where our businesses thrive and they succeed? And I can ride out there sunset where they're like, man, why were you so successful? And I was like, because I didn't put all my eggs. I mean, I did, but I'm also branching out and doing different things. Well, in two years when you're done come back on hey. we'll celebrate the whole ride <laughs> and uh hopefully you'll be balling out of control with these quantum energy squares should i be like jeff bezos and get all fucking yes. jacked like like you're like look at dj i remember two years ago he was on the show look he's all like jacked now on the sauce no god no gold never change no never get on the sauce never i don't need it how many people over in one fc are on the sauce though? i have no idea seems like a couple i don't see, here's the thing about that i don't i fought somebody on epo i didn't think tj would ever take ebo um, well, he said he only took it because he was trying to make one twenty five, right? Yeah, which but he I did still, look like he was on death's door. I still didn't. I still didn't want to believe he did it, right? So if people are going to do it, they can do it. Like I, I talked to a buddy at my gym. I say he goes, "Do you think this guy's natural or not?" I'm like, uh, "I think he's natural." He goes, "He's not. He's not. He he came out minute. He does it." I'm like, "Oh man, I would never do it." And I've seen Matt. He's still still fast as hell. Still trains. Got biceps, got abs. I mean, he's a freak of nature, but he doesn't do anything. How so. old is Matt now? Matt's, Matt is 56 years old. Wow. And he's still, still moving and still training. And, and still sparring. Still sparring. That's incredible. Yeah, so I, I have something to is look up Is he, like, to. really strict with his diet? And Yeah, but he's also just a freak of nature. Like, I tell him, I was like, you're built like an 18-year-old. Look at that back. Look at them biceps. Um, but it, I think that his biggest thing is that he travels so much. He doesn't have a time zone. So if I asked him, I was like, how do you feel at 56? He goes, if I get my sleep and my nutrition, I feel like I'm 22, 23. Wow. But he's like, if I don't get my sleep, that's what hurts him the most. Mm. So there's going to be a chance one of these I'm going to beat him in sparring. And when it does, it's going to be fucking dehydrated and lethargic. <laughs> and I'm like, now it's time. Catch him jet lag. <laughs> jet lag. I'm like, F-. and that was a thing. Like, that was my goal is I want to be able to take, you know, three months off from sparring. Like, I just punched for the first time yesterday at the gym since my fight. And I want to be able to like take four months off, come into the gym, like, all right, guys, you guys all been training MMA. Let's see how good you got in four months. And I'm still beating them. I'm like, just like Matt did to me when I was a kid. So, yeah, we'll That's see. That's the goal. That is the goal. Well, DJ, it's uh, always a pleasure to see you, man. And it's a pleasure to watch you out there killing it. I really, really appreciate it. And Thanks, brother. It's, it's nice to see. Thanks, man. And you got a great attitude, man. Enjoy the ride. I will, man. I will. Thank you. Um, tell everybody your social media so yep. they can find you. Yeah, social media on uh, Instagram is Mighty, and uh, Twitter is Mighty Mouse. Uh, YouTube is uh, Mighty Gaming. And yeah, man. Thanks for the support, Joe. I truly appreciate My it. My pleasure, man. brother. Good to see you. Thank you, baby. Bye, everybody.